Hello, everybody. It's your friend Lauren Kling. Welcome to another Film Threat Watch Party. Tonight, we're going to be talking about and watching the movie I Challenger. Welcome. So if you are joining us for the very first time, welcome aboard. If you've been here before, hang tight so I can explain some of the rules. So this is a watch party. What's going to happen is, is you are going to stream our movie of the night on your own device. So while you're watching us on your phones, your uh, tablets, your laptops, your desktops, on another device or on your TV, I want you to go now and rent the movie I Challenger. You can find it on Vudu, Prime Video, Apple TV, YouTube, and more. Uh, you get that ready. We're going to start streaming in about 15 minutes after the hour. So you're going to watch the movie on another screen. Uh, we'll all start the movie at the same time. So it's playing on in the background. And then we'll keep going. So with this watch party, we'll talk with the filmmakers. We'll talk to, with the director, the cast. Uh, to be very chill. We'll talk about the movie. We'll talk about favorite foods, favorite drinks whatever. It's very casual. Go ahead and grab your drink. Uh, and that's about it. So I'll give you time to go get the, the movie right now to get ready to stream. Uh, this movie, I Challenger, directed by Paul Boyd, uh, written by Paul and his co-writing partner, uh, Cara Scobie Brown. So before we talk uh, more about that and we bring Paul on, let me tell you about Film Threat. Film Threat is your go-to channel for independent movies. You can go to filmthreat.com. Uh, on there, you can see things like reviews. Uh, we currently have reviews for the independent films Actors, The Burning Sea, In the Forest, and My Best Part. We have some fun features on there, including seven movies on Prime that should have a sequel. There, there should be a follow-up uh, and a few movies that should not have had a sequel. Best British casino movies of all time. Best movies to watch after smoking weed. Ten best movie soundtracks. And I'm going to call one out right now that never had an official soundtrack, but Ferris Bueller's Day Off uh, was a fabulous movie and should have had a soundtrack on there. Uh, you can go on to our YouTube page. You can see reviews. You can see discussions. You can see our managing editor, Alan Ng, doing reviews. Also, you can see the Film Threat Podcast Live. That's uh, our illustrious leader, Chris Gore, who had conversations with our director, Paul Boyd. So if you want to go deeper into that. Also, Chris Gore talks about the return of the Oscars host and why this is such a big deal about award shows if there are hosts, if there are not hosts, and then cutting out certain categories. It's a thing that we in the film business love to talk and complain about. Maybe we'll talk about that again. So with that being said, go ahead and make sure you've got the movie I Challenger ready to go. I did not see a different movie by the same name, but once in a while, We'll have a movie and somebody will rent the wrong one. So this one just came out recently. Should be good to go. Have that ready to go. But in the meantime, let's bring on our director and our co-writer, Paul Boyd. Let's bring him on. How, uh, hi, Paul. How you doing? How you doing, Lauren? Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you. How was your conversation with Chris? It was great, actually. We dug pretty deep, you know, and got into the different layers and how we came up with the idea, how we did the whole process. It was great. He's a great, great person to get into it with. <laughs> oh, yeah. He loves movies and he nerds out hardcore on movies, uh, especially <laughs> independent. So right. me, I don't go as deep. I like watching them, but uh, we'll talk about all things. So your background is really in commercials, music videos, and I got to point people to your website, uh, BoydPaul.com. You have uh, you have worked on a few uh, videos from a few up and comers. Do you want to talk about some of those people we may have heard of? Oh my goodness! Well, I mean, you know, I did a, a lot of videos for Mission I Twain, Seal, Lenny Kravitz, Sting, Tina Turner. I mean, you know, a lot of new artists too. But those are the big names. I did. I did um, eight or nine videos for Shania uh, for her Come On Over album. And that album is the biggest selling female album 
in history. It's in the Guinness Book of Records. So a lot of people yeah. saw the work, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's it's amazing because it's really a mini film. How many days does a typical music video take from pre-production planning to shooting post and all of that? Right. Well, that depends, right, on the budget. Nowadays, our kids are turning them around in two days, three days. But back in the day, there was, you know, a week or two of pre-production, a few days of editing, of shooting, usually one or two, three if it was a big job. And then, um, you know, a couple of weeks of post, because then it was all tape to tape editing. But that's, I mean, it's still the same in many ways. We're usually a month all round from beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I'm sure we can sound like uh, get off our lawn kind of old people about the days when there were music videos. Yeah. Do you have you been shooting any music videos and then where do they air? Yeah, I mean, I've been shooting a lot. I work with a lot of artists and um, they just put their own work up. You know, there's a ton of it on YouTube. Um, you know, yeah, no, it's consistent. It's just less work with labels and more with artists who are working independently, self-financed are also doing great so the work's been very consistent but you know as i've been transitioning into films i'm just trying to do less of it because it takes a lot of energy as i said a month not every day but at least within right. that month you're focusing on it and, and i'm writing too so i try and keep my brain space free and <laughs> just be random but i like to i like to work with friends and I, I do that a lot help friends and you know that's something you find out every time I do one of these watch parties. Everybody knows each other from an acting class or everybody knows each other. A few people from one film who climbed on board another project. And so uh, it's a great business when you have friends that uh, can support you and that you can return the favor. Oh, absolutely. And that's the only reason we managed to make this film on a shoestring budget is because Brooks Geyer, the DP, is someone that did, shot my first commercial in 98. The editor wow. I've worked with for 10 years. I mean, we've the, the co-writer I've known for 10 years. So it was those relationships that allowed us to make the film happen because, you know, friends are willing to come out, work for less money, defer rates and, you know. And they believe in they believe in you. They believe in the con and the, and the art. So that I mean, it takes a village, right? You know that, and people mm -hmm. say that, and it's true. I mean, you can do it on your own if you if you a sound person, you know, some actors. If you know what you're doing, you can do it. And and it was this film was so small that it, it kind of almost felt like that. There was I think there was only ten or twelve of us. You know, it was a very contained. It's it's always fascinating. You know, you watch a film and you assume there's a a skeleton crew of of 20 or 30. I mean, I just remember those low budget horror movies that I was uh, camera assisting on. You'd, you'd have 30, 40 people. Yeah. But so to hear 12 people for what you produced, it's, it always astounds me. In, 12 days. In 12 days. In yeah. 12 days. Yeah. With an under with build, with build, digging holes, buildings. There was, there was a lot involved in this. Like we bit off a lot. But, you know, and that's why the title is more than just the title. Like, it was a massive challenge for us. But we figured, you know, if you're going to go for it, you know, do it. It's my second film. We have another film coming out in the summer. So I'm relatively new to, to making narrative films. But I've been making films since I was 13. And because I write, I think I understand storytelling a little better than just, you know, a director that's coming without that experience. I think that's that for me, that's important. I want to be an auteur. I just want to write and direct my own movies. I'm not yeah. really, the studio system's great, but I, I just want to do my own projects. Got it. Now is it, did I read correctly that you started making super eight films? Yeah. Yeah. When I was a teenager. Wow. Yeah. There was, was, yeah. We didn't even think was of this, like, films. you know, there were just more, uh, you know, sketches and then when i went to art school it, i suddenly it became like oh that's actually real stuff and i thought i was going to be a painter but all my paintings were triptychs they were like storyboards but <laughs> my <laughs> teacher kicked me off the course and said you're a filmmaker you know and that really validated it for me it made more sense so i just focused on that and that's what i've been doing for professionally for 32 years Wow. I want to bring Kara on in a second. While she's, uh, while she's setting up, I just want to remind you guys that we are here at the Film Threat Watch Party for the movie I Challenger. 
Um, if you're here for the first time, welcome. And just to remind you, you're going to be renting, streaming the movie on your own device. Otherwise, we have to pay Paul at least eight and a half cents in commissions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so go ahead and you're going to rent the movie. You can get it on Vudu, Apple, uh, Prime, uh, YouTube. So what's going to happen is you're going to stream the movie. You're, you'll rent it have it ready to go, stream it on your TV or one device, and then you're going to stick around and watch this watch party on another device. Um, also, if you're watching us live, you can uh, put comments and we'll share those with the cast and crew. So if you want to have uh, ask questions, you can do that. I always love it when our uh, panelists' parents come on board because, you know, uh, come on board to the chat to say hello, friends. My mom is usually on, so at some point she'll embarrass me with, <laughs> with it. something. Love it just it. happens. But um, let me bring on uh, your co-writer, uh, Kara. Welcome. Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry. There you are. No worries. I, um, you're you're having to DP your own uh, your own uh, camera, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a little uh, technical difficulty <laughs> over here, yeah. but. Yeah. It's all good. No worries. Welcome. So it's interesting. I wanted to ask you that your background is a lot more in production from UPM, Unit Production Manager, uh, project managing, producing. So has writing always been in your bones? Yeah. And actually, um, I did, even while I was doing all of those other positions, I was still, I was writing a lot of the treatments like all the, when I, I worked with Lady Gaga for a long time and um, I wrote all of all those treatments for those videos and everything. And then I, I managed the production. So I, you know, I, uh, I have a good deal of experience in both, but I, my heart is really in creative and, you know, everybody kind of had their moment where they're like, wait, what am I doing? Like, I don't want to just be you know, having my nose to the grindstone to make money. I want to be happy. And so I decided just to like full on, you know, go towards the, hmm. that side of things. <laughs> I know while you're talking in my mind, I'm thinking like of all the UPMs or uh, <laughs> that I've worked with, I'm like, were they happy? Well, there were times that they were smiling. Yeah. Usually we were in between productions and then mm -hmm. when productions were going and these were episodics and, and movie of the weeks, yeah. they weren't as fun and jovial as they usually are. <laughs> right. Well, and then I, you know, I had, I, I had a company called Electric Soup um, and I was, I was mostly doing episodics with that comedy and, um, but uh, yeah. And you know, it's, it's when you're, an executive producer like that it's like you end up just being a, a glorified accountant kind of and <laughs> I you know I was like I'm gonna get rid of the math and keep the art <laughs> I, I, I get it it does take a village and you wouldn't think you an accountant numbers um it's a lot of how did, <laughs> yeah, yes oh yeah how uh did the story how did the idea come about before we even get to how you guys teamed up who came up with this crazy idea well paul had been wanting to do a, a contained thriller and and he had a few um you know where somebody's trapped in the trunk of a car or <laughs> you know various <laughs> things and um, I happened to read an article about a man in Russia who had had buried himself for luck, and and unfortunately he he died <laughs> in that pursuit. <laughs> um, but it got her, you know, it got the creative juices flowing, and yep. we we figured we could make it into a challenge, like an internet challenge, and we just ran with it. So, <laughs> you know, that that was the the root of the idea. Yeah, I, I gotta say, add. when you think when you're when you know you're about to watch a stoner film, mm -hmm. I gotta say there were there are definitely comedic moments, and I can't wait to have James on because I want to mm -hmm. see what he, he's like in real life. But mm -hmm. not only did did he bring about a a really a grounded character who really loved life and was honest, which was 
so different than the stoner stoner movies we're used to. But mm -hmm. also, this wasn't just a straight comedy through and through. My wife and uh -huh. I were looking at each other a few times. So was <laughs> this, Paul, your idea to kind of freak the AF out of us? Well, we, we wanted it. We, we knew we wanted to kind of um, pull the rug at a certain point and, you know, and go into a, you know, a transition when we go into the dark side of the film, when he goes subterranean and he has to confront mm. his past, we wanted to make it a little scary, but you know, it is a kind of tender film. He's a sensitive, tender character There's a love mm. story in there. So, but from the beginning, the, 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 the clock is ticking. Cause you know, they're going on, you know, something's going to happen. And, and when the bad things start to happen, it's, it's how, how does he get out of it? And how do you know it to me, it's, that's the, it's the charm in his character and, the way just things work out for him that make the film. But it, we were trying to make a hybrid, right, Cara? We were, we wanted to take two genres and kind yeah, of we knew, together. Yeah, we, the, the goal was always that it was going to be multi-genre. Yeah. Um, and experimental, and really, right? Like, we knew we were trying... We didn't even know if it was going to be funny, right, Cara? I mean, well, I, I mean, that's... <laughs> Comedy is more my wheelhouse. Right. I, I, I have experience, uh, a, a lot more experience with it. And I guess Paul, from being from uh, Scotland, you know, was Yeah, nothing's as... funny over there. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's funny there. It's freezing. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, just it really, it really worked different... out. Like, yeah. You know, a lot of the comedy kind of just really like came out on set. It just kind of. Yeah. Was natural. It's, not, it's not joke funny it's situationally funny yeah. right? mm -hmm. more, and more the reactions between the, the odd couple which is this mm -hmm. buddy comedy in there so mm -hmm. it's these two characters mm -hmm. reacting off each other who are essentially the same facets of one person you know so mm -hmm. I mean it's really about identity right Cara and about you know stunted growth and and also about liberty and 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 kind of in a way like self-esteem. I think that plays a big part in the, mm -hmm. you know, the character's self-esteem in a way reflects his and, and change and affects his world. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. not, it, uh, the kind of concept of being the, the architect of your own destiny mm. um, came up a lot. And, you know, there's a lot of existential, uh, you know, rabbit holes that we we went into uh when we were writing this and um but it's just you know I, I feel like it was a good it was a good time because you know it was right before covid really hit you know we were still in in post and the world was was looking very very different you know and so yeah. it's and it, you know we really kind of captured a lot of I think those differences like on film, which is great, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, li li we'll start the movie in a second, but I do want to mm -hmm. bring on uh, the rest of our cast. So let me bring mm -hmm. on, um, speaking of, let's bring on our lead actor. Let's bring mm -hmm. on James Duvall. Welcome. Hi everybody. Thank you hey. for having me on. Hi. You played Sid, and also I'm excited to bring on uh, Mickey. Uh, you had a part of a great movie is the great lead, but also the supporting uh, mm. actors. So let's bring on Reed Shapiro, who's Reed. in yeah, trans yeah, guys. Reed. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, okay. We've got a, a couple more to bring on. Let's bring on our director of photography, Brooks. How are you doing, Brooks? Doing great. Thanks. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> hey. A little more hair than last time, James. Oh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Reed, your hair's the same and you look great. <laughs> Thank you. Always keep it long. <laughs> Have an age today. <laughs> and then uh, let's bring on our editor, who I'm sure was editing old school on an upright moviola for the whole thing, right? Uh, Ed Shears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I got to say, Ed, now, Ed, do you go back to the days of cutting film film? I, no, absolutely not. I am only 27, so... <laughs> 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 Do, does somebody want to fill the youngins in like ed on on uh what it's like to cut film paul did you ever 
uh, with your Super 8s once you process those? Did you do any editing or was it kind of, was it in school when you started doing that? Oh, no, no. We, I had a little splicer. Mm -hmm. you take the Super 8, you splice it together with sellotape. And then in film school with 16 millimeter, it was different, but the same. But you're cutting film, hanging the little shots up. It was, a, I mean, man, that's why now with digital, it's like, even with tape, it was a little tricky. But with digital, it's, everything's right there. So it's, it's, a, it's a breeze in comparison to how it used to be. It is not a breeze. <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I, mean, I don't mean the process of the creative, I, I mean the setup. Yeah. You know, I, I worked at a, I used to work at a movie theater when I was in high school and it was, there were, you know, still, it was still film reels and the projectionist would, we'd have to screen the films because a lot of times they would come with empty cells and we'd have to cut them out, you know, so yeah. Back in wow. The here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a film camera, not... Mm -hmm. Paul and I have done a number of shows with, shit with uh, cameras like this yeah. as a current lens. And instead of zoom, you you switch the lens over and it gives you a <laughs> wide, a medium, and a close. And uh, yeah, this is where film was loaded inside. And uh, this is a 16 millimeter camera and they used to be really simple. And um, what used to change was the emulsion we used. So we had more sensitivity to color and to, uh, and to light. Um, and now it seems it's it's every time you make a change, it's a whole system. But this movement here, it moved the film through the, through the camera, basically stayed the same for many years. Hundred years. So that, yeah. I mean, they still use it. And think about that plastic celluloid being grabbed by little teeth. Yeah. You know, it's like a hazard for scratching, but it works. <laughs> and part of the part of the artifacts of film is what made it beautiful to me. It's different. It's like chemicals versus ones and zeros. It's like analog versus digital audio recording. You know, there's a, there's a difference. Digital can replicate it, but it's not the same. I, and this I is a a little awfully little large. Thing. This is a 70 millimeter, but you know, this oh, is what man. film looked like. Mm. <laughs> like a roll of gaff tape, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, this is 70 millimeter. So 16 is a, just a portion of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a friend of mine uh, manages a, a camera rental house in Atlanta, and we were talking about uh, some of the gear, and he says, you know, he's still got some old Airy 535s and BLs, and some filmmakers still really love to shoot on film, even commercial spots. It's not just, mm -hmm. you know, that that O-tier filmmaker. Um, yeah. Any of you guys uh, that, who haven't spoken been able to uh, work with film, either in front of the camera or behind the scenes? Not me, not at all. Jimmy no, probably has. The, the, I, idea, I of, the idea of doing that. Yeah, I started off working in 16 millimeter, then 35, then super 35, and anamorphic. So, I mean, to be quite honest, when the digital revolution came and George Lucas was doing the Phantom Menace, I wasn't quite a fan of it. It took some, you know, it took a few years for me to kind of finally accept it. But I have to say now, as I was thinking while we were talking about it, it's interesting because there's advantages to both and they're different. So that, like most things, there's pros and cons to film and to digital, you know, for film it does because it's a lot more sensitive to light takes a lot longer to, you know, prep shots, to light things, to flip around, but you know, you're going to get something otherworldly and beautiful. You're not going to get any other way. Um, of course, digital allows you to do it much quicker, which as an actor mm -hmm. is a joy, but you know, it's, it's different. It's just, I, it's, become apples and oranges over the years i think yeah and i just want to let everybody know you you're going to get uh you're going to get one college level film credit for watching our watch party tonight <laughs> so can, you can graduate with an extra credit uh let's get the movie started we'll continue the conversation so here's what's going to happen you guys are going to get go to your remotes go to your tvs or your other devices get the film ready to go I'll mm -hmm. do a countdown. We'll start the film. If you guys are watching here uh, on the panel, I'm going to ask you guys to mute. Otherwise, we're going to have the audio playing at, at different times. <laughs> but uh, let's at least get the film started. So mm -hmm. um, so let's do a countdown. So we're going to go five, four, three, two, one, and go. <laughs> 
And I have to ask, whose idea of the toilet was was it uh, at the beginning? I think that might have been Ed's. I know Ed and I. It was because there, there was a was, toilet. Do you remember it? Oh yeah, that, yeah. That and that came that came really uh, towards the end of the edit, didn't it? That was a uh, you know what could work here. You know what it was? Yeah. I think because it, there's a symbolism in the film where it, of of Sid flushing himself down the toilet it happens in the beginning where he's on the loo and you cut mm. to him in this brown tunnel and then later in the film mm. you, you, you see him in this tunnel metaphorically. So it's meant to be kind of like this rebirth, like the, the rebirth of shit runs through it. And um, yeah, <laughs> it was a, it was an intense scene. Remember, Jimmy, you were meant to come out the end of the tunnel with beaver teeth. Remember? Yeah. He had them in his mouth. That whole shot. No, just they couldn't stop out of paper. Yet. Remember? Yeah. Remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stop milking. Yeah. We were in hysterics. Yeah. So we didn't get a chance to ask Reed. Reed, do you remember the first time you ever uh, either took pictures, made movies? Like, how far back did you did you ever do that? Were you a writer or artist? Um, I see. I've been acting since I was. 13 but i mean i had always i'd always like did like commercials i'd worked like did some co-stars i did a feature and um the first i feel like the first thing i ever did i mean i was doing like college films back home in texas that was like mm -hmm. how i started out i started out just doing like a bunch of college projects in texas and started all from there yeah now were you were you ever in the crew or were you just kind of doing the in front of the camera um, I was always in front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. With that face. I, <laughs> I'm always like, I want to be in front of the camera. You know? Yeah. I'm sure for most everybody else here, including me, if you ever work behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you had a high school or college project where you had to work in front of the camera because your actor dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's still the same today. On, yeah. on, on regular I, I, <laughs> that's where i think the saying i really do think it comes from the film business half the job is just showing up yeah 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 always so, happy when people show up <laughs> yeah and he showed so, up he showed up first every day i swear to you the first person mm -hmm. on set every day was james devout we got to the, the location before we started shooting and he goes he goes, I think I'm going to stay here. And I'm like, well, he goes, no, I'll, I'll get in character. I'm going to, I said, you're going to stay in the set? Because this is my brother's old apartment. Was, he goes, yeah, he goes, I'm going to stay. I'm going to, it was like, talk about dream come true. Do you know what I mean? As a director, like I'd show up, he'd be like, let's go. I mean, when mm -hmm. you trying to pull the actors out of trailers, come on, we need to do the scene. <laughs> he was there before all of us. That was it. That made it, I tell you, Jimmy's commitment to this film made it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't All thank right. you enough, you and Karen, up for having faith in me uh, mm -hmm. to do this project. Of course, man. Really yeah. honestly. Well, I mean, you were so, the you were the man. <laughs> no, you did great, man. You killed it for sure. Oh, I love you. I'll smoke to that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? Because we we originally had a different idea, right, Car, for the character. Well, we had we had um, a different idea of what we wanted him to look like. Right. Um, because we wanted him to be this this loser that, you know, in every way, like, you know, not attractive, not fit, not, you know. Hey, you guys, I'm sitting right here. But that, yeah. <laughs> that's why I, and I've known I've known Jimmy for for a very long time. And I, I hadn't even really thought about him because I, I was still in my head about the the way this guy was supposed to look. And the more I started thinking about it, I'm like that. Like Jimmy is this guy, like already, <laughs> you know, he's he's very much this character and he he just he you know slipped into it like a comfortable shoe and you know made it his own thing and it's just wonderful. Came out wonderful. I mean he's like he's like the character in, in as much as of his sensitivity and, yeah. you know, and all of that. He's I mean he's completely like different than Sid, mm -hmm. but the, but what he brought to it and what I didn't anticipate, because we had this guy, he was a kind of sensitive character, but he was kind of more switched off, you know, and, and I, just out of tune. But when Jimmy came and because he's already very sensitive, he brought this heart to the role where you just kind of, to me, it was like we kind of fell in love with him as we're doing the mm -hmm. film. So sensitive and people like him. And, that, and as we went through the film, we made that like, yeah, it's if people like Sid. 
know what I mean? And that was easy with Jimmy because he's such a likable, personable guy. So actors put themselves into the roles, right? Mm. I mean, that's kind of what but I'm telling you. We did. I mean, and we focused on that. Like we changed a lot of the character kind of, to kind of go, let's focus on on his strengths, you know? Mm. Yeah. Uh, How did Jim. you guys how'd you guys uh find james was uh was this a casting call had you worked with him before well i like i said i i've been friends with what like 20 years jimmy we've been, <laughs> been just friends. about 20 years now yeah yeah um <laughs> i and i i think we had, i think you did some little little projects with me but it, not nothing like uh, you know, on the scale. Here, here comes Reed in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, this weed, man. <sighs> Just always playing a stoner. I'm always yeah. noticed that. <laughs> I love all the, the things that you say under what, your what breath, like that? about him being a first, you know, having ne never smoked weed before and he keeps yeah. denying it. It's just yeah. that back and forth is so great. And Dash, that's Dash Connery. That's yeah. Like Sean Connery's grandson, and he was just so funny too. Like that the two great. of you together, it reminded me of my old friend Diddler. I have this old friend like <laughs> 20 years ago. We used to hang out together, and and uh, it just, that, that relationship there just reminded me of that. Could be an know. offshoot series, the two of them, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and then making them high schoolers, you know, that, that was important because you know, in in California, you can go into a dispensary if you're 21. But as we know, a lot of people under 21 smoke weed. And, you know, that we wanted to tell that story, too. And, um, you know, and it's kind of risky. It still is. I mean, you know, it's still, you know, we think living in California. But if you're a young person, you know, that's kind of what they have to do. Yeah. Or have a get a fake ID and just go into a you know, dispensary. But so we wanted to kind of show the the love of of marijuana from the young to the old <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well and i think uh, like initially we were just gonna have him be like a, a dealer and then yeah. we were like well now it's legal so <laughs> we have yeah. to you know cross that bridge yeah I never well, that was one of the things that was interesting was that uh it almost feels with the dispensaries now is you don't hear the stories about the friends dealer or the the guy in yeah. town so uh, this was kind of cool it was it was almost a, a throwback to the olden days of the 90s or the early 00s yeah right. yeah which is when we were that age you know and but it, so it was kind of you know it, it's definitely in this there's a bit of nostalgia in there like our film is also not a documentary you know what i mean it's kind, <laughs> of, it's kind of a fantasy like it, it's not like, <laughs> it kind of blurs the line of you know what I mean even the setup like now when he's playing video games and the lights yes. inside of the apartment the color and all that it's um it's meant it's, to take uh... you out of the real world a little and into this kind of and get you inside um Sid's head mm -hmm. so um I, I want to ask about this apartment oh I gotta say this the fan yeah. the, the yeah. weed on the fan Absolutely. We, my wife and I, were laughing our asses off. Whose idea was this? Did, Who did it Jimmy's? really happen to? Well, we <laughs> stole, we stole that, right, Carl? Yeah. We, there was a very famous meme of a girl. No, wasn't it something like that? Yeah, it was a yeah. yeah it was a something video. I had found that I'd sent you to that yeah. I had seen on Instagram. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, because you're always thinking about, you know, if you're if you're doing your job, anyways, you're always trying to think about things that inspire you and drawing parallels once you know you were identifying with the character and the moment i saw that i thought to myself we should you know i've got to send this to to paul and kara they've they just got and this is what we're making right now and then paul's like we're putting it in the movie yeah oh it's genius it was because yeah, it's, it's a visual that for five seconds it's visual, <laughs> it's visual comedy we cracked up looking at that little meme video and then you know yeah. so that's like okay there's a visual joke that kind of works in context with our character you know, because we're trying to play off that he's lazy. You know what I mean? He doesn't do much, but but he wasn't meant to be dirty or you know scuzzy. We you know I mean we wanted him to be you know you had to and and that's part of the challenge of this so film. Just, is that, just a little stone, okay? Just a lot stones. Yeah, but you know what I mean? It's a hard in the beginning of the film. You, you don't really like him. You don't know him. He's dealing marijuana to kids, but and that was the challenge. Is like how do you turn a character that on the outside is not really likable? into someone that, you know yeah that you like this scene in the car oh my this god this is great 
it was improv. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Remember this? We did this kind of on the day. Yeah. Yeah, we. And then we went, and then uh, behind the we gun. went. And the sun was setting. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the sun was setting, and one of the shots is great. You can see the neighbor across the street. <laughs> and he's honestly in the background and he's watching the guys in the car you can obviously what the fuck are they doing? because obviously we're filming and we, we're doing it totally <laughs> under the radar and it works because it looks like this guy's watching these two kids smoking weed in the car but he's mm -hmm. actually watching us being like what the fuck are you doing in my <laughs> filming <laughs> you'll see it well you're out. you're you're not alone you've got uh somebody it's stoned right now, so welcome, <laughs> Willie. <laughs> Willie, I love you. I'm smoking one with you, brother. Thank you for being here. <laughs> also to Pistachio Guy, uh, cool. Buenos Dias or Buenos Tardes, Timo from Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for posting your comments. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Um, Much love, Timo. I, I want to ask, I want to ask Brooks a question as DP. Um, was there any specific thing that uh, Paul or Cara uh, said they wanted as far as coloring or look with this? Absolutely. Um, I, I think both of them and kind of Paul spoke to me because our relationship is, has been for many years. And we, we did a, you know, a, a huge, you know, light study, color study to kind of, you know, give the film a bit of a transition with color. And um, that's one element. And then the other element was we were very contemplative and we, we wanted movement. We didn't want it to be classic and no movement, you know, like old style. But the movement needed, you know, to be very subtle and either motivated or not. But um, so that was a challenge. Just, you know, keep a little movement, sometimes be static. And then other times, like, you know, we'd be static for a long time and then start to push in, you know or vice mm. versa. So both movement, color, and light, uh, you know, major part of our relationship. And uh, I think it looks beautiful. I'm watching it uh, without the sound, which I don't usually do. And it's the best way to look yeah. at photography. It's it fun. Mm -hmm. It looks great, yeah. Paul. It, it, that scene in the kitchen looks like a, a Mondrian painting yeah. to me that, you know, the way that the color pops and the you know, this scene in the car is so funny because back in the day when we used to get stoned, we would give each other the fear. We'd start like just winding each other up. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And in this scene, that's all Reed's doing. <laughs> yeah. He's just giving them the fear, you know, about, oh, the, the big earthquake is going to come. And <laughs> well, because someone always gets the fear. You just hope that you're not the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It hasn't happened to me in a long, long time. But I remember as a young man, every time I smoked it, I would, I would get so paranoid, paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people would be like oh you know i can't smoke it it makes me paranoid but i guess after years you go over, you get over that hump right jimmy <laughs> does it still affect yeah, you the stages or... <laughs> it's, there's this scene oh my God, this, one where, this scene where he uploads the photograph of himself 20 years younger to tinder <laughs> <laughs> there's the guy in the That's background see the guy in the background with the, in the garden oh yeah there, there yeah. he is <laughs> you can see him looking over his fence his little head <laughs> uh, and that's that I think that was Dash's car too right yeah because we didn't have a car this was improv well, we were, we were going to use mine yeah that's right but his wing mirror was hanging off see <laughs> 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 can you guys talk about um who did the uh, production design and the set decoration of the apartment because it's it feels so accurate to uh the movie well we the production designer was sean costello someone that you know i i did a lot of videos and commercials with and he just has a really great aesthetic you know i mean he mm. he himself is such a colorful person so he brought a lot to it. I mean, the set, you know, and also it was hard because we did this for nothing. So mm -hmm. he, he had the hardest job, I think, actually, because it was like, here's nothing, make something out of nothing. Yeah. And, um, no and, crew, and, like no assistance. Yeah. No versus, assistance. A lot of stuff was done like very last minute, which was terrifying for me. And a lot yeah. of the things I was literally pins and like just sitting on the edge going, are we going to, is it going to happen? We, but that was just the nature. He had one assistant. 
I mean, you know, we were all like that. We we, we all wore multiple hats on this. And the AD, James Hyatt, he's actually on a job today. <laughs> he wore like 20 hats, that guy. You know, we were yeah. all... Yeah. This scene's funny where he's... Where he's um. He's just he's just got the Tinder thing and he gets on with it, he gets on with Logan. <laughs> I love this little smirk that he he's like Yeah. <laughs> right there. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. This to me is like a sci-fi shot. I don't know what it is. Like I always look at this and I think it's like he's in he's in the spaceship, like he's in the capsule. You know, I wanted his desk and the set that Sean put together was very specific that we wanted it to feel like a kind of battle station which mm -hmm. is what kids have when they play video games. We wanted it to be, that's the focus of his life is just, he's been sucked in, you know, he's been, become part of the machine. And um, and the game that he plays with Logan is called Splatter. We made that up and it's, you don't even see the game. You just see images of blood and guts <laughs> and sounds, the most disgusting, gross sounds that you can possibly hear. And that's a comment too, you know, of the way people judge games and movies and horror and all of that in context in relation to violence within society. So we wanted to put that in as a counter to his sensitive, nice guys <laughs> playing this most grotesque game you could imagine. So that was fun doing the sound design for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't hear right now. Right. <laughs> we, can, we can imagine. Yeah, but we can visualize it. Now is I know Logan is is uh, James' counterpart. Is is Logan's last name Run in the film? Did I catch that once? No, that's just his handle. His handle. Yeah. Oh, that's his handle. And is that based on the movie? Was that a kind of an inside thing for you guys? You know, Logan's Run, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, it was just a play on on the. <laughs> I think on, that we we show. aged ourselves with that with yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. And there's also that scene where he's running. And I always <laughs> refer to that as Logan's Run. So oh, I, that's right. Oh yeah. Oh, you're right. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and to tell you something, Ed, who's on the phone, is not only a fucking incredible editor, and I mean that. He did all the screen comps. He did the mm -hmm. video game yeah. graphics. He did. He did so much. Ed worked on this film for two years. Like I can, could not have put this film together. It's Margaret. You know, it was it was nuts. He did so much more, so much more than just uh, editing a picture. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's kind of like you know, if you're lucky, you know, you get two out of three things done when you make a movie. But you know, I really do feel like from the writing process to the production process to the post production process, you know, uh, Paul assembled a really incredible team. Mm -hmm. You know, allowing us to do all the things that we needed to do to get the job done and, you know, have a great, you know, a great time along the way. And hopefully, you know, people are enjoying it as much as, if not more than we did making it. Cause I got to say, it was a blast making it every day. Yeah. Margaret Cho, sure. man. There's Margaret Cho who, uh, who Jimmy knew. And, you know, and it was weird because everyone that we went after our first picks we got, we said, do you think we can get Margaret Cho? And she agreed to do it. Do you think we can get Tina Majorino? It was, it just worked in our, for some reason at all, that all clicked. So we were, and she only came right for one night. She was there for like yeah. four or five hours. It was just amazing. Such a professional. And, um, but and the time that you were, to the, your material, I think too, though, you know, yeah. they liked the material enough to, to jump on board. If the material wasn't good, they wouldn't have done the movie. Right. 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 But she you knew said her. to me you that she was, um, mm. she, she really was excited, uh, you know, to do something like this, that it was really different. And, okay. you know, Right here, look at the Brooks guy or the red. Just yeah. the color. I, I do know Margaret for years, for years. You know, she was in the Doom Generation originally with me as yeah. well. And I tell you something with regards She's to the always been incredible. I've always wanted to work with her to a longer extent like this. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Paul. Sorry about that. What were you uh, saying? No, no, of course, man. It's, it was great because I think without you, she, she may not have come on board, but you guys had a bit of a history. But but here's Brooks's lighting right here. I mean, he, like, talk about fearlessness, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I just love that. Like, and that's our relationship where it's like, you know what? Let's try and just push a little harder and a little, you know, more towards the edge. And um, and with Brooks's experience and all the films and everything he's done, to me, it allowed me to kind of relax and go, okay, technically this is all going to be handled. Now, how far can we kind of push it? For me too, as an actor, it's really important, you know, communication that we have with the, with the, DP and you know Brooks operating as well. So that 
being able to communicate, you know, with you, Brooks, like that very easily was made it a joy to film as well. It mm-hmm. really was, you, you know, you really guys put a good team together. And I think that that's a, that's a testament. It's a lot to say. In this scene, uh, were you tied up? Oh, my goodness. I, yeah. I, that I really remember seeing some behind the scenes. I, I remember seeing some behind the scenes footage of James getting the mouth prints put on him, uh, <laughs> applied by mouth. Is that that's right? Isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. I can't remember who's done that. One. Them. I think they're right here. Wait. And you know, this scene where he's tied up is based in reality. That happened to me when I was 19 years old. Yes. Recognize these socks? Nice. (laughs) When he he told me that story, I was like, that's going in. (laughs) And here he's saved by the technology. You know, he's saved by the technology. (laughs) You know, his game saves him, like his commitment to the game, the, the gear he's got, his technology somehow manages to connect him to his only lifeline. You know, and it's interesting in that moment you suddenly go, well, if I was in real deep shit, like, who would I call? You know, and in Sid's situation, he doesn't really have many people. Like, you know, even though he does, because the, all these people love him, you know, from his point of view, you know, it's a narrow field. I'm going to say I've never seen a telephone conversation like this before. I mean, it's like, it's classic. <laughs> this is like... The old days, it was, you know, you were on a rotary dial phone and, and like, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it allowed us to do some good stuff with the sound, you know, with Logan's voice and, you know, I mean, these disconnected conversations, I think are, you know, ah, all of it. I mean, if you think about it, he's in a box, right? And he literally goes into a box. He lives in a box. And then and in the film, we're all in boxes too during the live stream. And, you know. and he ends up hot boxing in the box. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these two are, meta. These two actresses are Robert Patrick's daughter and Skeet Ulrich. Skeet Ulrich's Ulrich's daughter. Daughter, yeah. wow. I was so thrilled that she had a, a walking cast on. We were like, yeah. That's the producer's son. That's uh, Eric Barrett's son, Zane, who we've worked I've worked with him as an actor since he was five. Uh, in videos and stuff. This kid is is just, you know, it's just a tiny little cameo, but he he's really talented. He came in and just did one or two takes and just nailed it. it yeah. I mean, look, look how gross the pulsating and test. <laughs> 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 uh, the socks. <laughs> and you know, it was so funny. Like, how do you, how do you, you know, with actors, it amazes me because, you know, he, Jimmy had to go into this situation where he's like literally pleading for his life. <laughs> So for someone he doesn't know to come here and save him, um, it's like, man, how, even when you write something like that, it's like, okay, well, you imagine that the actor's going to be able to go there. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's the presumption of writing, right? It's like, man, you put the people in these terrible, weird situations, like in a box underground, <laughs> and then expect them to give an amazing performance. Like, I, I baffle myself all the time when I read the writing. I'm like, what the fuck were we thinking? <laughs> well. Also, you know, we did this film, right, Brooks, is in a lot of masters. I was like, I remember yeah. going in saying, we don't want a lot of A and B cutting. We want to shoot this film in a lot of static master shots. And, and we had two cameras, but because of the budget and the time and all that, we we had to rely on the performances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why I love operating, because you have that intimate connection between the actor and the camera. And you're right there, and you're like, you know, it, it's oftentimes yeah. uncomfortable, but it, it's neat. And then you can give an actor kind of the, you know, by supporting them and in, in doing what they need, which I think I'm particularly good at. You know, it's like mm-hmm. give him his, you know, platform to do it. And uh, it, it was a good relationship, man. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. It really was. Do you guys remember how hot it was? <laughs> I remember I remember eating eating it was August, wasn't it? It was August in, in it was August, yeah. In LA, yeah, in that house with no AC. <laughs> you know, the mosquitoes would eat you. Oh yeah, yeah there was I had just come back from Atlanta and I'm like, since when are there mosquitoes in LA? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the moment that Logan Boy. meets uh, meets uh, Sid right before the end of the first act. This kind of leads to the end, it concludes. It's the stunning surprise. 
This it always gets a laugh, you know. Logan's reaction here always yeah. uh, it kind of brings us <laughs> so freaking great, man. He's the everyman. It's I mean, great. he kind of represents us in a way. He's the straight guy, mm-hmm. and his reactions, I guess, reflect the audience in a way. <laughs> How do you find him? Well, that was our casting director, yeah, Lindsay, Lindsay Chag. Um, who, yeah, she just gave us a selection as soon as we saw Coy, it was like the light went off. And then he came in and met James and did a reading, right, James? Remember? And it was just, yeah, it was, everything was organic and natural, it was so smooth, yeah. And I had a really specific look I was going for with this character, and um, he just embodied that. And he's young, you know, he says he's 19 online, but is he 15? Like, we don't, you know, mm-hmm. what I mean. We don't know <laughs> these characters <laughs> or who's lying to who and who's making it. You know, even when the scene when Margaret comes to the door and and yeah. and Sid says, "You said you were thirty. You right? said you were thirty. <laughs> I'm thirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the world we live in. Huh? Yeah. Same thing yeah. with the picture. That's me from the picture more from a couple. It's a couple of years ago. More than a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this, we, we lit the scene with the stairs, you know, these colored light tubes that kind of helped us, you know, bring us into Sid's brain. It's radical lighting, really, if you think about it for narrative. Um, but, you know, he's Sid's a radical guy. And this is the well, scene. I think the video game element, too, kind of lends itself to that, like, kind of neon y, you know, I don't, <laughs> I feel like the lighting is, is, really just right and this is the scene where he goes i'm a loser you know i never win at anything that's why i call myself challenger oh you know what's funny is i my i went with my mom to her her garden club meeting and they had a raffle and my mom goes i never win at anything and and she won and i was like oh you're it's like my film so i thought that was funny and and the first time you see these guys you very rarely see them in shots together we're just seeing them in singles, mm-hmm. and then as the film goes on, you see them and they, they can as they become closer, they're more included. But it's very rarely we do we go to that wide shot. And I'm not and, sure if you just saw the reference to the Sistine Chapel. You may want to take a reference to that. But when they pass the joint, <laughs> we go into this fabulous shot that looks like the hands joining yeah. the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> Brilliant. There's a lot of biblical Real qu- in this film, right? With the re- there's the resurrection, there's the baptism. There's the ascension. If you think about it, I mean, and I'm, you know, I'm not religious, but the, the themes are in there. And that comes mm-hmm. from, you know, I love Joseph Campbell and the writing, you know, the hero's journey is in there. Mm-hmm. And, um, right. So there's a lot of mythological themes. They're in subtext, but they're in there. It's kind of just like want to shout out to uh, w- Willie real quick, who who had asked, um, are we supposed to be able to see the film too? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I know you're you're probably baked right now, so I don't know if it's going to be too much of a challenge to go and rent the movie. But if you can, Willie, you can stream it on uh, Vudu and Apple and YouTube. And I'm sure Paul's getting at least eight and a half cents, and Kara's <laughs> probably getting this right. You're really? splitting Not that. Much? Um, <laughs> Wish. But Willie, if you can stream it, yeah, if you can stream it, we'll tell you. Uh, where to fast forward it to if not just Mm -hmm. hang back the stories are good that's the thing about these watch parties you can watch them any old time Mm -hmm. so here (laughs) so so here logan basically gives him the advice he needs which is you know you just need luck like it's really been the way that you've been that has slowed you down he gives him this big philosophical piece of advice and while passing a joint you know and um and Sid's like a receptor, you know. I mean, it's interesting because his, even though he seems like this kind of, you know, low life loser, he's actually an antenna. He's like a receptor. He he, he needs help, you know. What I mean, he needs guidance, and that's what happens when you spend too much time alone. You know, you begin to live in your own, your own world, and you know. So the outside connection of people is really what's been missing for him. He goes, I'll keep you as challenger. My name's Sid. He goes, I'll keep you as challenger. Call me. He's like, call me what you want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh, 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 
right? James is always giving away joints. He's always he's very he's a generous guy too. You know? Reed, how many? Uh, how long were you on set for filming? Because you're in this a lot, but it seems there's large chunks where we don't see your character. Was it like a week? It felt like a week. Yeah, about like five days. Three. Mm -hmm. Now, did yeah, you decide to stay in the apartment like James did, or? <laughs> uh... Oh no, I went back to my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and here, was that. here, Splugel. Splugel. Oh, Splugel. That was Ed. Ed's brilliance right there. You know and, that, what? and here we have you... a bunch of our friends appearing in this as playing the Russians, which comes from what Tara was saying earlier, which is the inspiration of the film. Do you think, really. do you think that what Russia just did is going to have a negative effect on our, our movie? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to have a negative effect on everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But you know, the truth of the matter is, is that and, uh, someone needs to tell them all they need is just a little bit of luck. Maybe they should try <laughs> burying themselves for twenty four hours. Exactly. Kara found this actress and directed these scenes with the actress, and she did it on her phone over the computer. And then these scenes here, and the Russian scenes, we actually filmed over at Brooks. He was kind enough to let us <laughs> shoot on his property, and. Uh, and we, that's it. we later, <laughs> we later used the hole to bury a, a dead pet of mine. <laughs> and and that's you oh, know good geez. friend of ours, Roger, who's a film producer. He yeah. you know, and he, we we've all known him for years too. And his his friend Jared with the dark glasses, a musician, and they came mm -hmm. up with those really funny. Yeah, I gotta say hats off again to your casting for these uh secondary characters. <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> there's so many talented people in LA like these guys aren't even actors that's the thing they're, they're yeah. not even actors you know and I mean although Roger's, I been... Ro Roger's and he'll actually show you some stuff that he's been in and be like check this shit out because <laughs> he's actually <laughs> really, he's really good but he's he is a good he's a producer he's not out looking for acting work but this girl was great mm. she did a good job <laughs> And this is the end of the first act. This is when he gets the idea of what he's going to do. And it basically informs the rest of the movie. It tells us what's going to happen and then uh, sets up the kind of the bomb under the table where it's like we're just waiting for it to happen and, and obviously waiting for something to go wrong because who's going to bury themselves underground for luck? Do, do we need to do a disclaimer here that kids don't try this at home? Is, yeah. that, is that enough? Okay. It's at the end well, of the uh, film. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. 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 The the Parental. Oh, did I miss that? Yeah. Ed put that <laughs> in there. Carry yourself in a box, idiot. <laughs> these, twi these twins. These twins are, twins are. Oh my god. They're in. They're like uh, influencers, and they're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they improved all this too. All improv, you know, and um. Kept it more real, filmed on their phones by themselves. So we were there, but it was just completely DIY. Mm -hmm. And um, that just felt so liberating, you know, to be able to, you know, because we're featuring YouTube and stuff. So we could use that technology. And it just, you know, it was, it was great. I need to go. I need to get in that pool again, Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> well, a little cold, cold right now, but. We'll and here it comes. Up. Here comes the look of shock and awe at the end of Act One from Sid. Ah, yes. Yes. You're going to see it in a moment when he drop when his jaw drops. It's a big, significant um, right there, <laughs> and it leads us into the second act. Um, and this is in the foot, the backyard. And this house is my brother's house, and um, yeah. he passed away um, about a year before we did the film, just less than a year, and. Um, and, and I'd written the film, or we'd written the film together to be in this house, right, Cara? It, yeah, it, in a bungalow. Was, and, I know and, it, like the geometry. It was, yeah. That was bizarre. Well, and then tell them the story about the, the whole. Yeah, because the, the guy that owned the house rented it to my brother. So I go over there and, mm. I, and I'm meeting with him because we were, my brother died in the house. Like it was all happened there. So 
I go back to see him and I'm like, yeah, because my producer says, why don't you film it in your brother's house? And I'm like, let me go speak to Kane. I go speak to Kane. He goes, yeah, you can shoot here. And I start looking throughout the house and I'm like, oh my God, like I wrote it to be here. The side door, the porch, the front, the backyard. I didn't even wow. know that. So, so then he goes, I said, but we need to dig a hole in the backyard. And he goes, oh, there's already a hole. And I said, mm -hmm. what do you mean? He goes, there's a koi pond underneath the deck. We rip up the deck. There's a pond there filled with concrete and a, a, a hole that basically was our hole. Yeah. I mean, wow. it was just meant to be. <laughs> it, it was, was, under it was deck. one of a, a, a few, uh, yeah. like, it's synchronicity, like oh. moments of synchronicity. Yeah, that was right, Cara. That was yeah, just definitely. we were tripping, and yeah. I been, and I'd been in that house for years. I never knew there was a hole under that. Well, yeah, because there was a deck over it. You were, yeah. you know, well, nobody would have well, known I'm, it was there. I'm just thinking of it when you gave me the script and I read it, <clears throat> and we agreed to all work together. But by the, I think only two or three months passed by the time we were in production. Yeah, mm -hmm. three months. We yeah. came together fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed to fall into play in the, the right you place. Wanna, you know, want to know why? Remember, Cara, we set a date before yeah, we, we had, before we had yeah. the script. We said we're shooting a movie in August, and this was January, and we didn't know what we were going to do. And then by the end, by the end of March, we had the idea. We had the script by the end of April, and then casting. And yeah, we filmed in August. Yeah, we were we we, lim <laughs> we limited ourselves with time. We were limited with the money. But yeah. everybody's, you know, so such talented professionals. It just really, and everyone was really passionate about it, you know. So mm -hmm. it just really came together. Real quick, I just want to, Willie, know that I am about 36 minutes and 57 <laughs> seconds. So <laughs> exciting that Willie's going to have the movie playing. And yeah, then we'll Willie. Go back and Willie. Watch it. Thank yeah, you, go, Willie. Willie. <laughs> <laughs> And the thank Willie, you for Willie's Pistachio the Guy for jumping in. Yeah. Oh, and yes, thank you, Timo Pistachio Guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Willie, well, I was on the Jazz Butcher site. Uh, Jerry mutual, mutual friends with uh, dearly departed Pat Fish, the Jazz Butcher. So happy to see Willie here. Jerry Bednob. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, he's he's amazing. He's oh. he's one of the best uh, character actors today. He was so funny. And then yeah, we I... I had worked with him on a series right. uh, years ago, and um, you know, would go, would watch his stand up and stuff. I've, all, I've, you know, kept in touch with him, and he, yeah, he he came out and nailed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's it's so, such a joy because, you know, Willie's kind of like a works very freely, so you don't know what he's going to say necessarily. Mm. <laughs> so you're always in for some treats where. Yeah, they'll just say that. You don't realize until afterwards. You're like, did he just say that? But you can't <laughs> react to that in the same. Here, here, here you see Sid in the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the show, this the is one of my favorite movie. lines. And I'm pretty sure yeah. it's his, he had lived the uh, <laughs> forever. Yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and also yeah. he, he um, when he said, if I'm your lucky star, then you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Can I say that?" And I was like, "Absolutely." <laughs> just keep it. Great line. <laughs> Shout out to Atwater Village, by the yeah. way. Shout out to Vince's Atwater. Market. Yeah, we love that place. My God, their roast beef sandwiches. Amazing sandwiches. <laughs> Six bucks. Like it's worth driving a few miles to go there. I tell you. Wow. And then, um, yeah, Jimmy on the bike. You know, it's interesting. We're so in this whole movie's interior, pretty much, apart from, you know, I mean, even when you're outside, you're in the box. So this little breath of fresh air that you get mm -hmm. after the first act, just kind of to set up, you know, where you're going. It's the expanse before we go into the, the enclosed space. And then um, I'll pick up my gear. Yeah. I, I love this house because there was that freeway right that's kind of going mm -hmm. right through the front yard practically yeah. and it just we wanted that though. Remember in the writing we were like the house is under under a freeway we wrote. But... Yeah, yeah. And MC Light, she was hilarious. She's amazing. Yeah, she was our first choice too. She came. Yeah. Anticipated. Well, yeah. We've been so fortunate. We really have. 
She goes, what do you do? He goes, I'm a small commodities trader. <laughs> <laughs> she just knows he's bullshitting. <laughs> well, telling the truth, from a point of view, just different kind of small commodities. And, and that line, the line where you say, are you his girlfriend? And she goes, no, <laughs> mom. That That's a direct steal from train spotting. That scene where you and McGregor wakes up and he goes, are you her roommates? And and, uh, and they go, no, we're her parents. <laughs> <laughs> that always fucking cracked me up. I love that little head, head smack on the way out. And, the, and here's Logan, who's like, you know, playing games online. He's, he's not telling his mom anything. And then suddenly someone comes to the door. This happened to me, too. When I was like 15 years old, we're over visiting relatives. And I'm on some CB radio in the basement that the, that the <laughs> uncle had. And I'm talking to these people. And they turn out to be gypsies. And they showed up to the house. I gave them the address. I'm like, yeah, come down. Oh, oh showed up Christmas Day at about 5 ah. yeah, in the afternoon. So that rude awakening is kind of where this came from of like no he's just going to show up at the house and, and confront because well, he he they trade contacts because he wants the weed mm. but he's not thinking about the fact that his address and everything's on the on those right. little you know right so we were like well, that's good <laughs> and people are so private with their information like remember you know they've been playing together a year and he doesn't even know his name you know what i mean it's like yeah yeah Well, they uh, they don't really know anything real about each other. But this is the this is one of the funniest scenes where Sid's like, "I'm going to yeah. bury stuff in the ground." That's gonna get my and he goes, <laughs> "You're crazy." You know, he's like, "You're you're mad." Yeah. He's taken. He's t he's t t he's started to walk that path. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. begun. Yeah, and then you get the turnaround because you never expect at this point that Logan's going to agree. Right, but he's a smart kid, and he knows that he he puts two and two together when he checks out the videos. He's like, actually, we can benefit from this, regardless of what happens. He sees the business. He's he like sees an the opportunity. And that's yeah. what my kids are like. That man, they like they, they see content and creation in a in a way that I never did when I was young. You know what I mean? It's how stuff can be monetized, and it's right. And here we're. Uh, She's, she likes him, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. she, because he's honest. He, she's always up there playing video games. He's like, yeah, with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guilty party. You know, so that yeah, self-effacing yeah. attitude that Sid has is kind of what... The, to me, this is a point where a lot of people, I think, watching the film have told me that they kind of are drawn more to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's me. 40 pounds heavier. <laughs> you were great. Is that an actual LA shop? I'm assuming it is. Yeah, it yes. Is. Yeah, real brand. It was so it was so new, it the walls weren't even up yet. You can yep. you see. <laughs> yeah, they let us that's their staff. They were open for business. Yeah, they were open. Like all real people in there. I mean, can well, you we can you imagine, right, right, James, when we did this at Brooks? Remember, it was like it was open for business. And we're like trying to match backgrounds and shit. But you know, hey, when you're doing a movie the way we did it for the amount of money we did, that is that's what you get. We just we just passed one of my favorite edits, which came real towards the end, where she's like, Oh, you changed your hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's crying. <laughs> oh yeah, the flash cut. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, and, and yeah, this is interesting too, right? For people outside of the country, you know, who can't get to be to see this and go, hey, you can just go into a fucking shop and buy it, is it's nuts. It's the way it should be all over the world. But that it was important for us to show this, you know, to kind of be like, yeah, this is this is where it's at now in LA. Mm -hmm. Beautiful thing. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Tina, they, they oh, tax out a lot of it, though. <laughs> Tina, that's why Sid's character still has the um, the his clients, the high yeah. school kids, because they can't go in to, to get okay. Nobody it all makes sense now. Yeah, 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 yeah. One and older. Correct. It's like asking right. the older kids to, hey, can you buy me some beer? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. 
<laughs> and and you know here you you see you meet her and she's got a little hat on. She's almost a tomboy, yeah. and and that's important too because this film is a role reversal. In the story, Sid is the damsel in distress. You know, he's the one in a way you'll see what happens later on. But so she had to have a kind of, you know, a strength to her that needed to be portrayed in her look too. And I think, I mean, Tina's a great actor. I mean, gosh, she's been doing it since she was like five years old. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we kind of, we turned her a little, you know, her role. She's originally from Waterworld, Willie. She was in Waterworld, Willie. She's <laughs> been acting much longer than I have. <laughs> and here we go, the lottery ticket. The numbers. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It plays as this insignificant thing, but it's pointed to a few times. Yeah. It's a little underlying clue. Um, Yes. Oh my God, the scene. The scene. <laughs> I think we broke out the 10 millimeter lens. Was it a 10 or a 16? That super wide we had. I think it was the 10, right, Brooks? Mm, I oh, think we okay. used it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When we go into the, the trip sequence, <laughs> the one lens that needs its own box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had like two or three lights. Like we, we, we put newspaper on the windows, tea stained newspapers, to get that kind of yellow golden look inside. And, and then just one big gun light, and that's how we lit. And that came from, <laughs> believe it or not, the end of Apocalypse Now. The scene with Brando and that golden yellow light was the inspiration for the scene. But the color theory is behind it is because of what yellow represents, which is you know hope and light, but also cowardice. You know, so. It had to reflect, in a way, it's Sid's cage. You know, it's his box, and it reflects his mind state. The voice of the cockroach was was Paul, by the way. <laughs> I thought that part was so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's a pretty convincing American accent, I thought, but what the hell was yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a wide lens right there. It's like a 10 mil. <laughs> See, I don't know if Willie is stoned enough where he's just if he's just saying, oh, bugs, or if he's freaking the you know what out going, bugs. <laughs> is Willie the only person watching? <laughs> there's a there's a few other that are quiet, but um Willie's loving to talk. So it's he's smoking that kind of weed, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you. Oh yeah. Oh, vampire from hell is here too. Yeah. Ah, so it's nice. all good. Well, there's a vampire coming up. Vampire, yeah. see if you can notice yes, it. It's there a is. single it's one, very one frame. Very one timing. Frame. It, here it I comes. love this. See if you can mm -hmm. see that. Oh, <laughs> did you miss it? <laughs> I actually I had a, a, a musician friend of mine, Willie Russell, knows who I'm talking about. Knight Berman, uh, who's uh, has a band called the Marble Tea. Actually messaged me on Facebook to ask if we had a shot of the vamp of Dracula in the movie in yeah. that scene. We got it. <laughs> yeah, we got it. In there. And um yeah, because it's you know something that my buddy that was referring to earlier, the diddler, Chris Davies, used to say whenever we saw each other, our eyes were so red when we were young from smoking weed. And we'd say the last time I saw eyes that red was Bram Stoker's Dracula. That was just something like we said to each other. <laughs> so, so that I don't got, think my eyes get red anymore like that. <laughs> no, they don't. Not like they used to. But that's where that came from. Except we used uh, the Christopher Lee Dracula, not Bram right. Stoker's. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, Bram Stoker wrote it. <laughs> Christopher Lee, man. Wow, we grew up with him. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I just meant the <laughs> film um, nerds. <coughs> yeah, Peter Christian, all those Christopher boys. Lee, you know, yeah, he did look like, yeah, Christopher Lee. Uh... And here we have Dig and his mom. Yeah. <laughs> Dig and Dig's mom. I loved working with them. Dig and Mickey. Yep. Who mm -hmm. we, we named two of the characters after them and then we cast them as different characters so it was, and that was very confusing for it me was very confusing 
Who's <laughs> Dave? Who's Mickey? Oh. <laughs> and I'm going, why did I do that? Like I did that like yeah. three times in the movie, but different. It's it's bizarre. You know, a lot of fun about the scene with them is they work really well together in sync. Mm -hmm. Obviously. So it's a really big joy to work with them because there isn't a confusion of like sending signals or whatnot. If Paul needed something, he's like, you know, can you look over here and do this? But really, they kind of had, they really kind of had it together when they came in. <laughs> Shooting it was like living the moment. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, they didn't have to do much. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? They, they, they just, just had it they really had it together. And, and, and you know, they, you know, casting is destiny. And I'm telling you, with Dave, he just, he just, he just looks, he, he has something about him. You know what I mean? They just, and the, the, just Dan, the fact that they spoke Danish, they both yeah. speak Danish. Yeah. But we were rushed into, you know, shooting because of the sun and, and using available light. And they sure. were incredible. Like, as we were like, you know, we got to get this going, getting different camera angles. You know, they just, they kept it going and they added to it a little bit, but didn't change it, you know, too much yeah. to not be able to edit the sequence. And, yeah, it was. It was and great. here, Sid, Sid invites them into the house. It's like, why? Like, that that was always a thing for me. I'm like, why would this guy let these people into his house? But you because know, it's because, high. A because it's high, but B because he's got <laughs> he's got an opinion on it. He's actually yeah, yeah, he's actually that. debating them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's was, debating them. And that's because was herbal herbal tobacco. So Vampire from Hell is asking if it was real weed. It was herbal tobacco first but i was having problems with that so they got me cbd weed yeah without the thc and that worked wonders it was really a joy to smoke that actually it's interesting there you see the chair now alien uh alien the, yeah alien where they sponsored us they gave us the battle station the computers they gave us the chair the laptop so that was a great that stuff's not it. cheap either oh no it's a really good high-end brand we yeah. could never have afforded it still more world. than what i have now <laughs> <laughs> But they were great. Oh, yeah. and, and of course, the alienware worked because the alien on the spaceship mm -hmm. and, and the alien is part of what they're talking about here anyway. So it got what us. What happened to all the alienware stuff? Yeah. <laughs> where, where did the alienware gear end up? It all went back. <sighs> apart from the chair. I think Eric, the producer. And so we didn't pay for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was half the budget. Yeah, it would have been. <laughs> Well, now, now you guys know how I feel after Donnie Darko. And they're like, where's the suit? I'm like, I didn't get it. Mm. I know, because I asked for it. <laughs> and here's the turnaround where, uh, you know, he comes yeah. and he's, he's actually, you know, the plan is going to go in action. So for here, from this point, after the scene, the film kind of steps up in pace as we roll into the third act and, um, and everything kind of shifts. It changes into a different, not a different film, but it, it evolves <laughs> into the one place. idea line always cracks me up. I, I always love that moment James, where you just sweep the cheesy poof song into the bowl from the chair that you've just been just been a slob in. It's just <laughs> those so so, <laughs> those cheese right. puffs were were gross. <laughs> yeah. And he's like here he gets the realization of like, you know, do you know how much money we can make if this thing goes viral? You know, Sid's not even thinking on that level. He's like, no. But the kid knows. He's smart. <laughs> and here, there's much more two shots. Like you see, you see, begin to see more of them together in the same frame. You see them reacting off each other, and, and as it moves forward, you get a lot of that right up into the. The, where they separate again and Sid goes in the box. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, we had to cut around performances too. So, you know, it would have been, you know, because we, I mean, we didn't even have that many takes. It was like, what no. takes me? That's the other thing, you know, about the, not having a lot of time is that you need to, you need to be rehearsed. And, and we, we rehearsed, but we, we did a little bit of that, but work with actors that know what they're doing who can be off book. Well, what are we, are we doing like 12? Nope. Logan was great. A day. Actually, when we realized what we needed to have cues were rehearsed and have the same mm -hmm. cues, like when we were going to smoke the joint, when we were going to pass it, so it would cut for you. Right. Logan and I, was, I, I was and, and it was so a joy, well, he's a joy to work with because he's a pro. He's he's a fantastic actor. So it was not very difficult to do it to to 
go in sync with him because it only took a few takes and we were on the same page. Mm. And I think it's a testament of how great of an actor he really is. Well, he, he had told me that um, it, a lot of that came from him being a, a child actor and, and like it on showed. a show and that they would, they, yeah, that they, they would do certain things with them and like push them, like knowing their lines and just uh, like there's certain habits that they would instill in them. And, so, and yeah, he, he came new still uses. He That's knew his dialogue great, he was you know. great at choreographing on the moment and, and improv mm -hmm. in the moment as well. Mm -hmm. You can't really ask for more. Yeah. And he's and he's funny like you are in this with the shaved head and the clothes and the dystopian and then him with his kind of, you know, he, he, he's, a, he's a quirky, funny character to me. The was, moment he comes in and calls me an old motherfucker, I can't yeah. stop laughing, honestly. And his, his like, legs, his, his chicken legs, like he kept laughing <laughs> and joking. What's his name? Like Cara was like, your legs. She goes, I love your legs. They're so I sweet. love them. And he goes, yeah, my mom. My mom says that all the time. I'm like, I, I see why they're. <laughs> dying. This car is like, I'm in love with your legs. <laughs> And then here, yeah. So the plan is to build the box, and yeah, uh, he's just, so he's just okay together. Yeah, it's funny when you look at the amount of lighting there is going on, considering the amount of time we had. It was it's kind of crazy. Like that's literally that slash in the window by the right side. There's one light coming through there. Like Brooks <laughs> was so limited. To what he, Brooks was so limited to what he could do, and uh, still managed to make it work. Three lights, maybe. Three, yeah. <laughs> you had that one little strip above the computer on the wall. Remember, there was like a... But we used a lot of natural light. Remember, we timed the day so that we knew when yeah, the sun was... I was moving. saying earlier, you know, we really planned shooting around this place. We spent a lot of time, you know, before looking at the, the sun and the way it came in through the, 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 yeah. the different, you know, windows. And, you know, again you know changing the scope of lighting and color you know we we embraced the the environment um and i think we did a great job you know augmenting the space and making different you know because mm -hmm. when you look at the front porch we mm -hmm. you know every time you go to the front porch it's a different look like mm -hmm. look at that um, you know and it's like those little things really make a difference you know mm -hmm. well i mean one one of the things i was you know I'm, i I guess I shouldn't have been surprised, but you know, when we're filming it, I don't really, you know, I'm in front of the camera, so I don't see, I see, you know, what we have around the production design and the set, but I don't see what you see behind. Right. And you know, what you're I, envisioning. And I had the same, uh, the same thing because we didn't really have, have monitors. We had like one monitor and, and it was I know I needed it to watching it. It was a joy to see all the stuff that you guys did and pulled off and the lighting and, I mean, I'm, and there's some scenes coming up I don't even want to talk about, but the the flares and I mean, there's some gorgeous shots in this movie in the most unexpected places as well. Mm -hmm. And that's very really visual. Enjoy. Well, well, Brooks and I spent a long time as visualists too, outside of movies, shooting commercials and videos. It's you know, especially where you know when when we were doing it at the at the prime, it was um, that glamour and beauty and making things look nice was important you know that's mm -hmm. what clients wanted then it wasn't so much diy like it is now it was uh mm -hmm. so this current, a certain... this current scene uh, this is yeah. the first scene we finished and it okay. hasn't changed since. oh yeah during a movie a lot of times about a half three quarters of the way through we get a sizzle reel and yeah. uh, like the editors put together the best shots you know and, and this was yeah. delivered like you know what day day nine or, t or ten and of uh, twelve and it's like oh man look at that and it hasn't changed <laughs> yeah and, hasn't changed. and that's the thing with ed and i working together for so long like he knows when he gets the footage he knows how i've shot it he knows how to put it together because we've done it so long together he just knows instinctively what to do so that's you know that saved a lot of time even though it took a couple of years that was more the process of getting everything shot and and mm -hmm. You know, getting it all ready with the visual effects, and on an, on well, a big portion of that was during COVID as well, wasn't it? And we would we yeah. edited this over Zoom. Yeah, yeah, we did. That's right. That's right. If that one of our very few night scenes outside, we did this with two lights. <laughs> <laughs> Too well. But again, 
again the set the back the backyard was great all the crap that was lying around like it was <laughs> you know, it was dressed, you know what I mean? It was it, it, we, it was we, ready to go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a character. It really was. It was what you know, the backyard was one of the characters in the movie. It really was. Yeah. The way we saw it first and then we uncovered it and made it the set and yeah. it was very much and there's a false floor, floor right? We we dug the hole and then we did the hole in reverse where we dug the hole, covered it in wood, covered it in dirt. Then we took the first section off. Like th this was a fucking process. Just yeah. figuring out the, just figuring out where the hole needed to be filled or not filled in the schedule of our shoot was like a mind fucker. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Trying to figure that out. And on the day going, how are we going to make this on one? This was one day when we we're in the backyard for the, the, the day stuff where we had to make it look Full and empty twice. Yeah, in the same time. Wow. And uh, we did joint can't fix. plywood and dirt mm -hmm. and apple boxes. I mean, <laughs> it just shows you. It just shows you. Movie magic. Yeah. And then, and then we just made the actors uh, right? dig the hole. <laughs> yeah. Smoke and mirrors. And then, and then hopefully, yeah, you hope that, you know, that the, the, the actors and the performances are what you're looking at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what you hope. Did any of the neighbors uh, ever ask what was going on? The homeowner spoke to them. He'd been in that place for like 15 years. He knew his neighbors. The neighbor on the other side of the fence joined us in production. We had all production on the other side yeah, of the fence. It was a duplex, a duplex, basically. And uh, so oh, all the wow. neighbors were cool. Everyone was um, was cool. We didn't have one issue. Mm -mm. Yeah. Thank you God know, that would have killed us. I mean, we had no time. We had no right. time for issues. <laughs> Well, and there, there was some neighbors came by and they were like, yeah. are you guys shooting a film here? And I thought they were going to complain. Right. And um, and they were like, we just moved here. We didn't think that they shot movies out here. Like in Atwater. That's funny. Excited. <laughs> so we got a question from Vampire for Hell, everybody. Do you have any advice for how beginning filmmakers can start producing content? How do you get to yeah. start? How do you get to the start of a production? You, you, you write an idea mm -hmm. and you take your cell phone and you enlist some of your friends to act in it, and you just go do it. And then it might not be any good. It might not be any good, but the next one will be better. And the next one mm -hmm. will be better. And that's, Every time you'll learn, yeah. You just have to do it. That's it. There's no other way to if you only, you know, Back in the day when we – let me put it in perspective. When I had to do it as a kid, we couldn't do it on a phone. I mean, we had to go get a Super 8 camera, buy the film from Germany, send the film off to get processed in some old lady's bathtub in Yorkshire. And I'm not joking. <laughs> that would come back. Then we would have to take the film and get the film telecined on the tape. And then we'd have to take the tapes and edit the tapes and then take those tapes and then upgrade it to master tapes. I mean, it was, it was a lot of work. Now you can shoot it on your phone, put it on YouTube. <laughs> half an yeah. Hour. yeah. With the mm -hmm. heat, full HD with full 48 proper sound. So, you know, there's nothing. The only thing that's stopping you is, uh, is your own ideas. It's just coming up with ideas and doing it. Wow, oh, thank you, Ramsey. My friend Ramsey said beautiful and kaleidoscopic visually, very inventive use of practical location. Oh, thank you so much. And um, here they're laughing, here they're kind of having fun together. Like they, they, they've got over the work hump and they're actually working together. They're giving each other high fives. Like yeah, they, they've come together and now they're working as one. And, um, and you know, and they're the same, to me, they're two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. They really are, you know. Um, oh That's my God. A older, That's all. The comps in these scenes. Oh my God. What a nightmare. I put a green oh. screen computer and, and then it was, it was, we just had so many challenges and the amount of work it took to get these screens and get <laughs> Ed, our editor, built the comps, built the, the interfaces. I mean, he didn't just do what an editor does. He yeah, did yeah, motion he graphics. I mean, so. And then, and he's a director too. And one day he'll be making movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So he's about to step in. Yeah, 104. We're literally just getting into the third act. And you know him in the flight suit? Yes. <laughs> it's ground control to Major Tom, like because he's going into the capsule. He goes, I mean, he goes into space right later in the film. So that was important. Like his wardrobe was something that we really thought about. Like, what what can we do to kind of really connect him to the story? 
Well, it's a big, it's like a big fashion. It became really fashionable after that. Like all of a sudden <laughs> yeah, it was, right. <laughs> we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we do like, we made a trend. Yeah. But anyway, that was, impl- that was a, 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 when we came to that realization of the flights that was really solidified his character for me, it really made it clear that he was on a journey. Mm-hmm. Got his uniform. You guys read this. Scott Slaughterbeck said the sound is really, really important. Viewers, you will never forget bad sound. Yeah. I've always mm-hmm. said that there's a reason why best sound editing and best sound has an Oscar. Hot, yeah. Without that, oh, then, you know, it suffers. Yeah. It's often neglected. Mm-hmm. It's, you Very much can so. tell an amateur production with, with bad sound, you know. But Jimmy, Jimmy, Star Wars, look, look, Star Wars would have been Jimmy, nothing. Jimmy's the hero here. He's like looking out the box. He's like, "Come on, man, let's get the, get the pipe." Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. You, you just become the leader right there in that mm-hmm. moment. Like we feel that your fear is gone. You know, from someone that was kind of living with papered up windows, and yeah, you there's this internal drive that you have, and and it's interesting as a character because you're like, well, you know, what is it that's stopping him? You know what I mean? Why is he where he's at? And um, and that's why when he goes into the box and you kind of go into the underworld and you begin to find out, you know, why he is who he is and why he is the way he is. And this was done in a studio. This was uh, right at the end. The last two days, we we're in a stage doing the uh, doing these. <laughs> mm. I really think our minds. <laughs> I have to say, yeah. I didn't think I was going to enjoy the stuff in the box as much as I did, actually. <laughs> Like, one, 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 doing it or doing it or seeing it, you know, because that was a tough experience for you. Yeah, you got yeah, your section. <laughs> there, well, there was a couple times, you know, I freaked out once or twice, but there was a couple times that I was really getting into it. I'm like, these GoPros are going right because I'm just gonna be in here rehearsing, and that's when I ended up freaking out. And you guys thought I was just rehearsing. Yeah. No, no, we're really freaking out. We had a sandbag on the lid. And not only at one point we we had all four walls of the box, because for most of it we had one wall removed and we were filming with a periscope. But for some of it we had all four sides on the box and the lid Mm. and the hole, and we were dripping water onto Jimmy like like (laughs) water torture onto his forehead. And and only and only filming with the GoPros. So that happened at one point. And he wanted to get out, and we couldn't hear him. And he's banging the lid. So for a moment, he, uh, yeah, he freaked out there. Sorry about that, Jimmy. I'm sorry. I think that was before Did- the waterboarding. It was when <laughs> the waterboarding. You guys had to put the weight on there and put that really bright light through the pipe, and it got super yeah. hot in there. <laughs> so I was like, oh man, I'm gonna bake in here. Like, like, yeah, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, man. <laughs> you were such a good sport. I, I have one issue with with. Uh, Sid in the box. Where are the snacks? This guy is not a true stoner. If there's just three bottles of water, <laughs> oh, have the, it's that vape pen I have in there. <laughs> no, he's just vape he's, yeah. Vaping he, doesn't create the the munchies. Yeah, he's you know he's just water and weed. That's all he needs. <laughs> and now <laughs> water and water and weed. These are all our friends. We were. Yeah, this- this we was were, interesting because this was a, a product of uh, the lockdown. Was it, us changing it to this style of, you know, like a zoom. That was brilliant. Visually, I thought it was stunning. Yeah, like, it was. Mm-hmm. It was From definitely the, a coup. Well, the beautiful thing about it was that yeah. we, we we were originally going to film a series of vignettes over LA mm-hmm. of different people watching the the live stream. So you'd see different kids and people in their apartments. And and we just couldn't do it because of COVID. And then yeah, Zoom was happening. Them. Zoom was happening at the same time. So we're like, that's how we do it. Because then we can just get a hundred friends around the world to film it on their laptops or, or their phones and send it to us. So we came up with a, a brief of the react like this, react like we didn't send them anything. They had a sheet of instructions, all of the people that filmed themselves. You know, my, my and, and friends, all I didn't together. even give them that. I, yeah. my, my friend who's a real police officer by the way who's the guy who evicts me in the beginning yeah. is also in this footage going yeah. i think i evicted this guy right and this, <laughs> and, 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 and that style inspired uh paul's next movie it's a, a, yeah. a youtube-based movie it's interesting so yeah i think that may be the genesis of that 
You know, what was, you know what was crazy, Brooks, was I got to put friends from high school. I got yeah. to put family. Like, they, yeah. like the guy there smoking, the, the guy in Costa Rica. I've known that guy <laughs> 35 years. Like, yeah. I got to – it, it became something so much more than it ever would have been if we didn't like do that. personal crowdsourcing, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and you know what else? It was during the lockdown, so no one could say no because it's like, well, what the fuck are you doing? You're sitting at home. You're doing yeah. nothing. It, and, and so I had to literally – some people I begged. I'm like, please, just – Give us a minute of footage, and and some people just did that, and uh, and everyone was on lockdown as well, so everyone had free time. Everyone's at home bored. Like I'll do it. <laughs> I'm something to entertain my kids. It's a really beautiful, happy accident that yeah. worked out beyond expectations. I, I think agree. we have a question here again from Scott Slaughterbeck for uh, Paul and for Brooks. Right. If I miss if I miss this, what camera were you using? I like the look of the film, and where was this filmed? It was uh, shot on a red and uh, dragons, we, right? We had two dragons. Yeah, yeah a couple of uh, dragon sensors and, and um, yeah, very, very small uh, uh, lens package and um, yeah, with had, the red. We had super speeds. We had we had yeah. super speeds. Yeah, we shot on two. We did have some problems with overheating, but we yeah. also did shoot in the middle of the the summer in 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 uh, Los Angeles, so. And these are um, older cameras, hard. older cameras. We shot 4K ProRes, so we didn't even shoot in RAW. Um, but, you know, we, we consulted with color beforehand. And, and you know, at this point in my career as a director, I know exactly how I want my shit to look. I know how to make it look that way. That's why I have people like Brooks. Um, so if we weren't trying to do anything fancy. We just wanted it to look good. And um, But... Yeah, and a lot of natural light. I love natural light. Yeah. I really do. Just... Well, and it's especially nice, uh, you know, in juxtaposition to the, all the, the dark interior, like neon, and, you know, it really yeah. kind of gives you that breath of fresh air. Yeah. We wanted, and also, we, the, we... Camera, the camera doesn't distract from the story, you know, kind of adds to it a little bit, but it's not like, you know, shaky cam or this or that. It's like, it's fairly classic and it kind of like it almost lets it's almost like proscenium style in a sense you know it seems like it's always got a uh, a really well framed kind of thing you know and, mm. and and that was what you know paul was looking for you know uh combination it's not just you know fast action and panning and whatever no yeah because yeah. because like, I mean, like, watch the yeah. action watch the actor yeah, exactly. Because, you know, when you're doing a lot of cuts, you need a lot of shots. <laughs> you know, I mean, all the amazing stuff you've done with Michael Bay. I mean, all the talk about multiple camera, multiple shots. This was almost the opposite. It was like yeah. camera static right. perform. And um, and that's hard because then people are you're looking, you're examining. Yeah. Oh, look at that fucking pixel. You know, what, what's that? <laughs> flare? I'm like, well, put it this way. There's plenty of flares and plenty of errors in this film because we did it for nothing. We were shooting. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have to embrace that. You have to embrace, yeah. you know, yeah. what you can Well, I mean, I think that becomes, yeah, fun. kind of the aesthetic for this type of film, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, it being very well lit in terms of, like, we planned it, you know. You know, yeah. so we, we – but we took advantage of natural light to, to make it work within our budget. Yep. Yep. The flare I'm talking about is still much further away. Further along. Yeah. Oh, when <laughs> when you when the, when the cameras are moving in the box and the water's on the lens, this is yeah. where it's like, oh my god, there's ten thousand people watching us. He's like, what? Ten thousand people? So he goes from being on his own with one person playing video games to be in front of ten thousand people, and that is, you know, talks about, you know, social media and instant mm -hmm. celebrity, and, and and at one point, Logan says, I've got a thousand followers. <laughs> Even that phrase, followers, it's like, it's like, what are you, yeah. Jesus? <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Or Jim Jones. Yeah. Did yeah. You, so we, we talk about all that just for fun, you know, because it's just to try and make it, you know, relevant to now, you know, and hopefully it'll be like a time capsule in a way. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, 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 it certainly be. captures the, the I mean, time. It's 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 an honor yeah, yeah, yeah. to be here on film threat at the film threat watch party. To be quite, <laughs> <honest>. yeah, <laughs> no, it is super yeah. cool. I mean, that, 
people want to sit down and watch the movie with us. Jimmy, we did the movie, and then we had these two days in the box. And, you know, all the experiences and everything that you did in the movie and all the stuff that you went through in the film, including filming the end first you know, before you were in the box, I think really informed you in the box because it allowed us just to have you in that one space for two days. And, you know, and um, I just think that was the right way to do it, you know, leaving that stuff to the end and so that I you could a better way to have done it. Yeah. Because we did kind of, I mean, you have to take into account was that we only had 12 days, but for the most part, it was sort of shot in order. So yeah. here's a lottery yeah. ticket. The lottery ticket um, is significant because when he goes into the store and he goes, usual numbers, Vinny, he goes, no, no, no. He goes, I'm just going to try my luck and go random. And he goes random and he wins a lottery. So, you know, that's really about letting go, isn't it? Which is really what Sid needs to do. He just needs to let the fuck go of everything and all his past and things in order to move forward. But, you know, in life, it's like doors, you know, you can't move through one door unless you let go of the door handle, you know, and he's kind of in this place where he's stuck in a moment. I like that one. <laughs> I love that yeah. LA Kush was open the entire time you were filming. So there's real customers in there. Everyone's working around you whilst you're trying to film a movie. Yeah. Do you remember, remember how bad the sound was though? Remember how bad the sound was? Ed? I do. Was Double, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was just people talking and the phones were ringing. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and they, like, and they like, gave us gift bags. Yeah, oh, she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, those gift bags. Remember, Jimmy? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that was great. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> their their brand is all all through. Yeah, we yeah. walked into the store in the morning of shooting. They fucking put their brand everywhere. Remember every hat, every bag. It was like here. Yeah. <laughs> like it's kind of like a huge commercial for LA Kush. I think it's hashtag LA Kush. Come on. Yeah. 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 Oh wait, is it not like that normally with everything? And how beautiful brand is she? Everywhere? I just. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but they they tweaked it. I mean, they put LA Kush branding in all the cabinets. I mean, we we went tight, you know, because it was everywhere. It was on the carpet. Was... What's great is so a few people I've talked to have seen the movie. I'm like, oh, that's such a funny name for a weed shop, LA Kush. I'm like, no, no, no that that's real. We didn't make that. That we didn't create that. That's mm. already there. Yeah, that's one of the <laughs> few things that we didn't make up. Uh, it's yeah. In fact, the majority of people think that we made that up. And we, uh, when we went to see them and they agreed to let us shoot in the location, she goes, she says to me, will you be needing product? Yes. <laughs> <That's> exactly, <laughs> absolutely. <we need. laughs> and you know, we have a lot of scenes, so we need a lot. And she gave us this big, yeah, it was, it was great. She gave us a lot. Pretty, it went pretty quick, though. We should have had a security guard for that alone. It <laughs> diminished pretty fast. You know, I was smoking CBD on hours, but after hours, THC <laughs> is all right. And here we are shooting out the side of a car, <laughs> Logan running down the street, the same as we did the bicycle stuff. Like there was no rig. We were handheld out the back of a pickup truck, you know, um, DIY. <laughs> I want to agree with Willie. I want to agree with Willie. Uh, James in the box and the side angle is a great image. Great shot. Isn't it? I, that was, I had that, that was like my one contribution to like the. the... <laughs> it, it always reminded me of the great escape. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a great shot. It's kind of our Wes Anderson moment. You know, we wanted to kind of yeah, the, break, the break that wall of reality. You remember that one he did with the ship where it's all inside the ship and the boat and it was a, a huge cross section? The Life Aquatic. The Life Aquatic. Great film. So to, that was definitely. How do you build the dirt? Oh, we didn't. That's all uh, CG. Yeah. It's a box, and then we just blacked around it. Oh, then... it wasn't even a practical. I, no, I assumed it was a practical. Like with... on... No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, it's box. CG. The box is on boxes. Box? On stands. Box is on boxes, yeah. Up off the ground. We, you, you, we did toy with the idea of putting like a like some a human remains somewhere in the earth. Yeah, around yeah, right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but the good thing was is that now if you think about it, if that was a real shot and a real cross section, you it would be black because there's no light under there. You know what I mean? So I had to create a little bit of right. spill. Like it's the complete fantasy, but I think it it you know it takes you. It's kind of where our film lives. It's not meant to live in reality. It, it's about real things, but it's. <laughs> it's heightened 
<laughs> it's real to him. I, yeah. you know, Willie, yeah. I, I always, I wanted earthworms. I always had that in my head, but you know, earthworms. <laughs> but it cost money. Yeah, that's uh, that was outside. This, that this, was outside. There's there's loads of worms in there. What? You have to I've rewatch got, it. <laughs> yeah, I've got tons of behind the scenes pictures and videos from those two days. Actually, so do I. I have. Um, remember that bass guitar that only had one string, Jimmy? No, I need one string. No, I need one string, you guys. No, one string. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> if you There's can't make it work with one bass string, then you don't know how to play a bass guitar. I couldn't agree more. That's exactly what I was saying. I'm like, you only really need I, one string. I've got the video to, to MC Light it. here. She goes. She goes. Where is Sid? Where is he? When she realizes oh, yeah. the ticket, and you get that flash frame of him in the box going, ah! it's, it's you know, where the, it's, it's a real, it's one of my favorite edits. Yeah. That made me laugh so much. Right yeah. yeah. That edit is so great. And, and this is the reveal of, of, of Logan's age because she's like, because you know, he's not trying to steal the ticket, he's taking the ticket to show his mom. And his yeah. mom's like, it, it's like who would do that? Only a kid, and it, but it's but, a subtle uh, yeah. reveal that mm. he's just a kid, you know. He doesn't know what he can't make a decision without asking his mom. <laughs> so, many, <laughs> so many good friends here. The, I mean, there's so many good friends. It's really here. sweet in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. It is. The little flashlight there just works so well, Brooks. Mm -hmm. See the little flashlight yeah. in front of him when he's in the box, just gives us that little bit. There's Mr. Mm. Shapiro again. Yeah. <laughs> Look alive, Reed. Look alive. Coming to the rescue. <laughs> Great video of you and Dash running in in the making of it. Reed, I've got to send you. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> Definitely send it. And it's raining in LA. <laughs> yeah, that's all the rain. He added I'm that, right, Ed? You added those little drips. <laughs> 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 Budget filmmaking, mate. That's all coming back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Reed, in a lot of ways, Reed's character was like me, like way back when. I'm like, hey, man, someone tied up. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Went up to tell me twice. Dorian going to hit me on the ass on the way out. Right. <laughs> we got Elvis in here. Look, Elvis and Priscilla. <laughs> I I noticed that. I, I noticed the guy with the bird on his head. We and uh, <laughs> yeah, Elvis and Priscilla. Oh, Joe. The, dude, the dude was in there, too. The dude. And the dude. Yeah, the dude was in there. <laughs> The guy that could be another T-shirt. The guy with the bird on his head was our crane operator, and he in this film, and I've known him for years, and he sadly passed away this year. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he's in the film a lot with his animals, and yeah, you know, we we lost him a couple of months ago, and he was on every one of my projects, right, Ed? No, he yeah, he great, is. amazing wow. operator, yeah. So isn't here. that Brooks? How you started? Didn't you start working crane back in the day? I did. I started back uh, when there was a thing called the Luma Crane. It was the first remote control camera crane. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of started with the remote camera operating world and uh, segued into, you know, working on all different styles of movies and commercials and music videos and, you know, ran into people like, you know, Paul and I've been at it a long time and we're all still working. So yeah, it's good. Camera I gotta say, you worked on a great I, film, Pet Cemetery, which is pretty yep, cool. Absolutely, and I was just with Lorenzo uh, de Bonaventura shooting uh, a movie in in Montreal, and he's doing Pet Cemetery four or three uh, in Montreal. So wow, yeah. well, started with awesome. Peter Bogdanovich back in the day. He passed away recently. Yeah, amazing director. I got into the union on, on a movie uh, called Noises Off with uh, Peter Bogdanovich directed. And oh, wow. Sad to see him go. Mm -hmm. Paul's a great director. He yeah. um, he took care of Orson Welles. You know, uh, yeah. He kind of took him in and helped him and got him back on his feet and took him, literally accommodated him. And when, when Hall of Hollywood rejected him, you know, Bogdanovich was there. So here, the computer gets stolen. Ed uh, and Sid is now on his own in the box. Logan's tied up, and it's raining, and we're like, shit. So we, we enter the dark phase of uh, where, where it's kind of building to. Mm -hmm. 
panic and uh, claustrophobia and all that. I remember it was kind of based on buried. You know, we saw buried years ago, and I was like, my God, they spent ninety minutes in the box. Like <laughs> they never left the box. In this one, we're only in there for 15, 20 minutes, but it's kind of enough. People. Well, you know, we didn't have Ryan Reynolds. Jimmy, you're funny, man. And then here, here, he, he, you know, it's so funny. He takes the weed and he takes the, you know, mm -hmm. and then the the zip ties come back. So everything kind of comes back in a circle. But... Mm hmm. Oh my God, these kids! Remember, Kara? Yes, I do. We had fun with them. They were because here, like in this, you would do a visual effect. Normally, you do some kind of like green screen composite to get the kid in the box. You do it in CG, a ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, we just had an open hole at the end of the box, and you said the kids stood yeah, under there. The little kids stood under there, and then a little spotlight on him. And then Ed did some magic uh, with matting and post a road scope around him and stuff, and, and it worked. You know, it, you feel his presence. That's all that was important. But you know, with nowadays with visual effects and everything, it's like, okay, well, how do you make it work uh, <laughs> practically? And that, you know, with our experience, that's something that we've had. We had to do. We came from a time before CG. Mm -hmm. yeah. and and you know it's it is always it's always nice to have something practical is even as good as cg is now it's mm. just um you know it's that combo right the combination of physical and and uh, practical and yeah, it's just old, old men old men practical with visual effects yeah. i think that, that's yeah. really, that's the that's where the it's unreal engine thing image. is you know it's a classic image you know from the yeah. day gone you know visually yeah and here he's on his own. You see the red signal. There's no one watching. And, and this alone. is an, an ode to '70s photography. You know, the, a lot of these shots are an ode to a, a you know, a classic style in a sense. Yep. You know, yeah. yeah. That was my car. <laughs> Just a little, uh, little fun fact. <laughs> And then here, Jimmy, I mean, you know, there's no music concert, there's nothing. I was like, okay, now you have to be fucking terrified here. And it was all in his eyes. Do you see his eyes like those micro mm -hmm. and Jimmy, like directing Jimmy in those moments of like, okay, the, how do we create sheer fucking terror when we're just all on set eating donuts, you know? Um, but it, he knows how to do it, man. That's the thing. When you work with great actors, they don't just give you what you have in your storyboard. It's so much more. Uh yeah, they bring it's like a, a prize. It's like a prize because for us, Karen and I, we have it in our heads, you know, of what it's going to be, and then suddenly it's realized. It's it's mm -hmm. like working with Ed, the same thing with editing. You suddenly another brain comes in and it it makes it more than yeah. what, or what you thought it was going to be. And here's the reason for why Sid is the way he is. As a yeah. young man, he accidentally knocked his brother down the stairs. There we attached the GoPro onto a that little a, doll. A G. G. Joe, yeah. Which kind of but you know was a way way of being less gratuitous than trying yeah. to throw, trying to do anything with a kid going down a flight of stairs, you know. Which a lot of times they would just cut to black, right? They go yeah. boom, and you get the sound to go, oh, he fell down the stairs. But doing that thing with the GI Joe, I thought just well, it's, it's, it, look, it it's, looks it's great. Yeah. That that the end was, frame was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, really is, it tells you well, like one you know, one, you know, one shot as well. That was wasn't yeah. it? It was your first oh, exactly. first and only attempt, and it worked out perfectly. Yeah. 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 yeah, and um, and then the shot there was like six of us standing around, and it was a GoPro. So Ed <laughs> plays the shot, and he had to paint all of us out of the frame. Yeah, <laughs> And I'm like, no one can see us. No one's gonna see us. And he's like, we're gonna. And he fucking goes in and hand paints out all of us. <laughs> I'm talking about going above the Call of Duty, you know what I mean? No, you that's really what... could see us, though. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's what I mean, but that's what you want with people you work with. You want them to fucking to dot the I's and cross the T's, even when you're not prepared to. You know what I mean? That, and that, I appreciate that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> This was we, our big splurge. Was that rain truck? No, we had a, <laughs> we actually had a truck. Yeah, a, a water truck in the alleyway behind us. It was like 
pissing with rain, remember? Yeah, yeah. EB's like, no, we're not doing it with a hose. We're getting a proper truck. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was a, you know, it, was, it worked off. Yeah. And here, the flares, and this is just Jimmy in the box, just with the GoPro. Um, GoPro sound as well, I believe. Right? GoPro I, sound. I think and he's, Sound. Wow! And, they, and then he he dips the camera here, and he, he did the, the operating in the camera here himself. You see when yeah. the, when it slips, and he just uh, that right here, and then he moves it back. Just brilliant. Almost the last stuff we did. Almost the very yeah. last thing we filmed, I think, Jim. Yeah, and that um, yeah, your poor your poor ears. Yeah, you got. I said you got an ear infection, didn't you? From yeah, you got you got an ear infection because uh, from being underwater. I guess. Yeah, I got I got what they call swimmer's ear. Swimmer's ear. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, that's funny. I haven't been swimming. I'm swimming you. I got <laughs> swimming well, you. Well, it was funny because when we're in there, like, she goes, swim? I'm like, no. Like, have you been yeah. underwater lately? I'm like, yeah, for a couple of days. <laughs> okay, so, so here, here we here we have Jimmy breaking out of the box now. Of course. Yeah. You'd never break out of the box. So this is where you enter that kind of, um, was it Birdman? What was that at the end where you, you're not sure whether someone's alive or dead? We get into this sequence here where you begin to go, the real, the wall of reality breaks down, and then you cut back to him sitting on the toilet. So there's that symbolism. But this we were going to be funny <laughs> well, right at the end here. He was going to lift his head and have beaver teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the man. <laughs> well, and when we, were, when we were shooting that scene, I was like, he he looks like a turd moving, slowly moving through <laughs> small intestines. And then we were like, yes, we need That's to. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this was so DIY. Can we? We had a little stage and a, the, the friend got the background play. I mean, we we did uh -huh. this. You know, It took time because we did it so DIY, but it worked. Yeah. It, it kind of takes you into yeah. you know, the, the dreamland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's his laptop. You know yeah. what I mean? There's your Ethernet port right there. <laughs> yeah. And it's, he yeah, becomes yeah. zeros and ones. It's data. You know, he kind of uh, crosses over. And that's, that's the end of Sid. <laughs> This would be oh, the time when you have a pot leaf on the DVD and you take a hit. Yeah. We're going to do a version in 4K when we put it out again. We upgrade it with a little pot leaf in the corner every time you're meant to smoke a joint. <laughs> There's <laughs> like my, my little uh, my cameo. There's Cara. <laughs> Yay, look at her. <laughs> you were so good. You were so I'm good. wondering how Willie's doing. Oh. How you doing, Willie? How you doing, Willie? It's just us now. Hey, we love you. I love the accent on the A. Oh, amazing. Oh, oh, amazing. amazing. Oh, yeah. And there's a good use of a mural here. Just happened mm -hmm. to be outside the. I thought that was an interesting way to combine that mural, looking over our shoulder. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, in the story, this is where, you know, she takes action, she gets his address. She hasn't heard from him, so she gets yeah. his address and she goes over to his house. And um, you know, well, and this was a this was like a sensitive area because I think a lot of a lot of women feel like uh, they don't want to be like you know seem obsessive or creepy or anything, mm. and you know, but but she genuinely has reason to be concerned. And I mean, she kind of saw him in a box, and he tells her he's buried underground, <laughs> and then he's got. Yeah. Water coming in on him, and then it cuts out. Yeah, it's yeah. her female instinct, man. It's her female instinct. Women have instincts that men just don't have. I think, in my opinion, and I've yeah. seen it in my life. And and you know that woman's instinct, you know, like, to me, that's what that's meant to represent is that she's even though she's not really, you don't see her on the screen during the live stream. She's kind of more tuned in than anyone else because she speaks to him on the phone. Mm. But you know, there's a delicate balance there of playing that too much and um you know because i mean it's one of those situations where if we did more time and more days she would have been in the film more there would have been more she, 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 she went, when we oh, went yeah. to do the uh inserts 
the live streaming, she had cut her hair. Do you remember? That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she did. She did a bunch of stuff with us with her hair wrapped in a towel. And it didn't work. Yeah. It just, it just didn't work, work with the timeline, but yeah. yeah. But uh, but it works. It's like you know, she's she's an important in the film because she represents mm -hmm. his the future, and she represents mm -hmm. where Sid can you know where he needs to go. You know, in well, his she life. also she also represents um, an opportunity that was always there that he just didn't see and exactly. didn't take. You know. Exactly. And that's life, right? Sometimes we don't see things that are right in front of our face, you know? It's like, um, you know, because we're just, we're not focused on that. Well, if you think that you're unlucky and that you've got a, you know, a bad break and, you know, you, like everything sucks, you just don't I see that. Like you see openings, yeah. yeah. So we kind of had a discussion about that, which I think was like kind of the core of it, you know, uh, for my yoga teacher we were talking about an experiment they did where they took 30 people who thought they were lucky and 30 people yeah. who thought they were unlucky and they had them walk a path and they actually left 20 dollars on the ground mm -hmm. and it's a surprise that the people who thought, thought that they were lucky i think 20 23 or 24 out of 30 found the 20 dollar bill because mm -hmm. they're walking out and they go of course 20 dollar bills because i'm lucky so out of the unlucky people only 12 people found it so let's right. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so you really do make your own luck. Yeah, of yeah. being lucky. So they literally step over 20 bucks because they're not lucky. It's not happening to them. It's, yeah. So that well, was like, I, I know for me, the mindset really of behind what the importance of really what luck is. And here, and here, that is a big part of the film the, that, you know, in the, the philosophy of the film. But here, you know, all the characters come together to save Sid. Right. Sid needs saving, right? And they save him. And we, are, we at this point think he might be dead because we've seen him transition, right, in the box. We, we do a red herring kind of where he goes into space. But that's really, is that a death dream? Is he still dead? Is he dreaming that this is happening? That's right. the other question for the film that we kind of leave open. And which I loved about Birdman, that kind of way they ended that film was such a fuck you. It was so great. I'm like, films mm. just don't, they don't do that anymore. And, but it was important for us to tie a bow at the end of this film to a certain extent with regards to making it a happy ending. We debated, should he die? You know, this dystopian film. And and, and a, a lot of people were saying, I think that should happen. I'm like, no, it can't. It needs to end positively. It needs to be, you know, a journey towards the light rather than the darkness. Otherwise, what's the fucking well, point of the story? It's also the death of the old Sid and the birth of the right. new Sid. Right. Right. Well, and and because it's it, it is it really is kind of up to the perception of the person who's watching it, Butch whether Cassidy. they you know whether he's yeah. whether he dies or not. You know, it's a Butch, Butch Cassidy moment. We originally had uh, tear uh, raindrops here, right? Rain. Yeah. We had a cover version of that. <laughs> and then we had a bunch of covers in the film, but then we decided ultimately to go with all original music mm -hmm. in the end. We had a bunch of hip-hop and weed tracks. <laughs> and we even had Lucky Man in there as a uh, – my son did a cover of that. But we, ended up, we ended up taking it all out and just going original. And the A-Team mm -hmm. theme. And the A-Team – the A-T-M theme, yeah. The A-Team theme. Oh, the A-Team, yeah. That was <laughs> And here it's like, this is like a 60s movie to me right here. This feels like some kind of caper type, like it just, you know, with a check for 300,000. It, it just it's so blown out fantasy. And she's dressed like Kurt Cobain with a, <laughs> this is a leopard skin jacket. <laughs> it's just too much. Oh, thank, thank you, you Jim and Brandon, for watching. <laughs> Thanks for not killing him. <laughs> Yeah, right. He, and he, he, gives half the money, he, gives, he gives half the money to Logan. You know, he's like, he's my business partner, my friend. So Logan wins, you know, because oh, when they make the agreement, Lord. when they make, they shake their hands, they say 50-50, you know. So, yeah, in the end, he, he gives Logan his share. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have died. I wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for him. Yep. That's true. I'd be dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would well that's not I mean I guess she saved me but I <laughs> she did yeah. me make the live stream to become re reborn. If it wasn't for Logan in every way really I wouldn't be well mm. Sid would be the person that he is. Yeah. Well everybody yeah, I think everybody plays a, a every like we didn't put gratuitous characters in, you know, everybody plays a part to, in in the story mm. ultimately. 
all the all the way to my all the way to my heroine that rescues me, the the man in distress mm -hmm. into the sunset. That's the flare shot I'm talking about that I love. Yeah. The Butch Cassidy shot. It's so yeah. beautiful. Instead but, of being on a bicycle, it's on a it's on one of those scooters. You know. Thank you, yeah. for it, Scott. <laughs> It's always great to hear stories of uh, films that inspired different scenes, even if they have nothing to do oh, with yeah. it. You know, even just thinking about, uh, you know, the the golden glow from the windows in the apartment, Apocalypse mm -hmm. Now would yeah. have never placed that. But it's yeah. that's why these watch parties are so much fun. Yeah. Because 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 yeah. for me, when when I when I when I watch Apocalypse Now, which I've probably seen a hundred times, like it's more trying to pay respect to your you know what I mean? That your heroes. It's well, that's one part of it, but the other part of it is really the lesson of of you know from someone like Star you know the DP of that movie, Victoria Star I mean, you learn so much just from a technician like that. And you know, cinematography is all about light and color, and you know, what I mean, that's such a, that to me, I think you know that's those things are important to me. In con and at least they were for this story, for whatever reason. <laughs> Thanks, Willie. <laughs> Thank you, Willie. <laughs> Your daughter's name is the same as uh, Paul's daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lunas is new. Wow. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, before we go, I want to go around the room and find out what projects you're working on. I want to start with, uh, I'm looking at my notes. Where did it go here? Um, let's start with Brooks. And I got to ask, Brooks, did you work on a Richard Simmons project? <laughs> I, I worked with Richard. Yeah, what it was, uh, shaken to the oldies. Yep, I worked with him on uh, a handful of uh, instructional videos. When in the day we created instructional videotapes for, uh, you know, exercise and jazzercise. Yes, in mm -hmm. fact, one day he pulled my shorts down. Believe it or not, <laughs> I believe like, it. On the side, it was a random thing. Long story, but uh, yeah, he was awesome. And yes, I did. Worked with wow. Richard Simmons, loved him. And then Cara, I, wait, I Cara, you him. said you worked with him. Yeah, I worked. Did with you him. work with I, him as well? I did. I I um I produced a, it was a a like a teaser for Air New Zealand where they decided to send couples on like a twenty four hour trip to Los Angeles because they had just you know started offering a direct flight or something. And so we did all these different things, and we um, and one of them was his uh, Beverly Hills aerobics class. But um, and he, yeah, he's quite a character, and his and the the classes are hard. Like the guy, I, I think the guy was hungover, and he had to keep going outside. He couldn't even. <laughs> so, but yeah, he's a riot. Wow. Well, uh, let's go around the room, Brooks. Uh, what projects are you working on next? So let's see. Uh, I am off to do the next uh, Mad Max movie in Australia. I leave in a couple of days for uh, Australia for about eight months. I'm going to go do um, a movie called Furiosa. And it's the backstory of um, Charlize Theron's character from Mad Max Fury Road. So, um, wow. yeah, heading off to Oz for a little bit. Just, just finished Transformers 7. And uh, Michael Sorry. Bay's uh, ambulance uh, in the beginning of the year, but uh, it's been a busy year and a few years, and looking forward to uh, my next venture with Paul. You know, uh, we've shot a couple movies together now, and uh, we've had a relationship for mm -hmm. gosh, thirty years, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's awesome uh, as a cameraman to be able to collaborate with someone that you have kind of a closer relationship to than you know just a hired director for you know or something like that for me you know and i'm sure it's the inverse with the director but um we've had a good run and you know we're still at it and trying to redefine mm -hmm. ourselves and these last couple movies have been a little bit different and you know the, the, the next movie uh, paul and i did was you know another version of movie making and we did it in the middle of covid and we successfully made an, a movie in during covid you know and michael bay you know brags that he did too well so did paul and i you know so mm -hmm. cheers yeah. to uh, good movie making and i love being a cameraman but I, I, i'm nothing without a great director and paul 
Love you, brother. Love you too, man. Definitely. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Brooks. Uh, Reed. So I know you've done uh, movie independent movies. You've done episodics. You've what done co-star, guest star, lead. So do you have a preference for TV versus film? Honestly, I like doing film more. I just feel like it's it's more fun. Honestly, I, I like film. Um, TV is so structured, you know. You know, like with, with Paul's film, you know, we were able to, you know, improv and stuff and, you know, really just like kind of be in the moment as to where like when I was working on Disney, working on a sitcom, everything is just so structured, which is great too. But I just love that freedom of being able to really just like tap in and just, you know, getting the character and just be able to, you know, to have fun with it you know it's so much more fun when you're able to just be free yeah yeah mm -hmm. i imagine your character mickey was in the car the entire time when you were mm -hmm. not on screen <laughs> <laughs> um not the entire time no <laughs> but um <laughs> well, yeah, what, do you, what do you have coming up reed um so right now i'm just in the auditioning process i just recently just did a super bowl commercial that aired mm -hmm. during the super bowl so that was pretty cool and then nice. um i had a let's see i just did a show on apple tv physical so i was just did a little co-star role on that oh yeah yeah that great project fun. yeah yeah that was a great project mm -hmm. wonderful thank you yeah. uh ed what do you got coming up next are you editing you doing any directing or producing yeah i mean i have a couple of uh short films i've written which i plan to shoot this year but uh honestly my next big gig is whatever paul shoots next so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it all we're, we're, we're actually working on a film right now a musical film for an artist Dave Stewart's daughter that Ed's cutting and singing, which is a musical performance is a narrative meshed together into like an hour long thing. So we're always, wow. we're always I try to keep him busy. <laughs> you certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Cara, what about you? Um, well, I, I have a few things. I mean, I, I, Paul and I have written something that I think i uh, He's looking into uh, get you know getting that done soon, and then I also have um, I believe it or not um, I have a script that Norman Reedus gave me like eleven years ago <laughs> that I was crazy about, and he never sh he never shot it, and has been you know been on The Walking Dead ever since. But now that it's ending, um, I I have uh, you know somebody without wants to green light it for MGM. So I've been talking with them and I'll probably produce that. Um, it's something that he wa he wanted to direct though, not act in. So, but it's, it's a great project. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Are you going to keep doing uh, comedy projects like you used to do? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I really genuinely love, doing comedy and um and then and i also love documentary too I, I have some documentary um you know i did i did one for hbo and those are those are fun too you know but yeah i'll we'll see we'll see where the where the wind takes me <laughs> awesome thank you and then uh james what about you what do you have coming up um i have a few things coming up um with I Challenger that came out, I have a movie called Nightshade with uh, Lou Ferrigno Jr. and BJ Britt that's also currently playing now, as well as uh, the band Boy Harsher did a film for their new album called The Runner. I appear in that as well. That's also currently playing. Um, next month, uh, one of Martin Lando's last films, Without Ward, um, I appear in as well. Uh, I'm very happy to be announcing this one because uh, we just got the go ahead to be able to talk about it, I think, a day or two ago. Awesome. But it's a very bizarre, uh, it's called Without Ward, directed by my friend Corey Cataldo. It's very kind of bizarre and set in the future when, it, when half the world's on lockdown. Mm -hmm. I think we can all relate to. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, uh, as well as working on, I'm still in the midst, thanks to COVID, of a series and two features that I'm not done with that I hope to get back to and finish sooner rather than later. Keeping busy. Yeah, and then are you still it? Are you still in the band called Gene Wilder, which is a, a fabulous name? Um, I'm, 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 
Um, I mean, it's not that the band really dissolved. We just kind of moved on to different creative projects. Love so, I'll make a friend of mine, Brian McGuire. Um, I moved in with him at the turn of around 2010, and he ended up, because he was frustrated as an actor, he ended up shooting six of his own movies within three years. Wow. Quite wow. impressive. Very John Cassidy <laughs> style, taking advantage of the new digital revolution and the turn of it right back in 2010. So, all of a sudden, it became a lot more affordable. Not as easy as, as affordable as your phone, but a lot more affordable for us to do. And so we had a great time experimenting and making little films with, you know, and we got Harry Dean Stanton to come in and work with us. And, mm -hmm. um, John Hawks and Nick Stahl and Mark Boone Jr. So we have quite an eclectic array of actors that joined us for this little adventure. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, though Gene Wilder's not going, I still... I'm in touch with these people and still make movies with them from time to time and make music as well. Wonderful. I, I love the name. And also I got to do a shout out for a, a wonderful movie called go, which was uh, it's a great such a That's great a movie great back in the early days of EDM. Thank yeah. you. That was a blast. It was, it was a joy to work. You know, I got to say Doug Lyman was a joy. It was like, wow, this is the guy that did Swingers because you know, <laughs> it was only his second movie back then. I mean, he's done some, I don't know, he's kind of done a kind of few big movies since then. But uh, yeah, Doug was a joy yeah. to work with. Oh, God, we could talk about Swingers forever. But I do want to get to Paul and have everyone uh, go off to the evening. So, Paul, what do you have uh, coming up? Um, well, we, um, we uh, the film Brooks was talking about, we filmed last year called We Are Gathered Here Today. It's basically a dramatization of death at a distance. It's a family experiencing the patriarch dying on a Zoom call. No one can get to the hospital. This is what happened. This is actually what happened last year. So we set that up and um, with um, Danny Houston's our lead. And then we got a bunch of stars to be in it, 20 actors. We did it over three days with Google online. There's these eight-hour conference calls. We, it was all improv. So that's coming out. Cinedime are releasing it. That's coming out in the summer. And then we're going, Cara and I are going into another film called Relapse, which is about a musician that overdoses on opioids during lockdown, which is going to be filmed over a week with a bunch of uh, FaceTime calls and stuff in it too. So very similar to what we did in I Challenger. And we're doing that at the beginning of May. And then I'm just finishing two scripts on commission. One's a musical and one's a horror movie. So just busy. Wow. Well, thank you again uh, for being on the panel. It was really wonderful to chat with you guys. Thank you to everyone uh, who are watching and joining in. Thank you to Willie for getting high along with us. Thank you for Pistachio for helping Willie figure out where to go. Uh, thank you to my friends, uh, Brandon and Jim and Scott. Uh, thanks a lot, Mom, for not coming on to embarrass me. I kind of missed it. And, uh, and to Vampire... This is how it all starts. You pick up your camera, you shoot yes. some things, you do it again, you do it again, and then you end up on a film threat watch party. That's it. So <laughs> so from all of us, see, Brooks has got one himself, right? All you need. So from all of us at Film mm -hmm. Threat, thank you so much for watching. We're going to do the uh, goodbye, the kisses and goodbyes. Thank you, everybody.